and uh, in, in terms of uh, the program, by now, it is 8.12 right now, uh, it is expected, and of course, with military precision, we are almost uh, guaranteed that the body has arrived at the Kisumu airport, and right now it should be received. And in the next few minutes, the convoy should be leaving uh, Kisumu airport to come to this particular uh, uh, place. This is 60 kilometers away. We shall be walking with you across that journey, uh, even as the general makes the last 60 kilometer uh, journey on road to his home. By now, I repeat, as indicates the program, the body of General Francis Ogola, the chief of the Defense Force of the Republic of Kenya, uh, should be at the Kisumu airport and the convoy should be leaving Kisumu in the next few minutes. We expect to have the convoy here uh, by, uh, by this, according to the program, we expect to have the convoy here by 9.30. So it should be about a 30 minutes journey. According to the peers in the Ministry of Interior, uh, Raymond Omolo, where there will be minimal interruptions to uh, the normal flow of traffic because everything has been planned to detail. So uh, in about 30 minutes, uh, the convoy should be here and President William Ruto, the Commander-in-Chief, should be arriving 15 minutes after that. So we are speaking about one hour or less uh, than one hour, 30 minutes before the event kicks off here. According to the PS Raymond Omolo, all this should have ended by 1 p.m. before it proceeds uh, to, yeah, before it proceeds to uh, 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 the, where he will be laid to rest, where only 50 people will be allowed. Now, I'm being informed uh, that uh, our Zakius Mosame is on standby uh, to give us a brief on what is happening on the other side. Zakius, it is a very heavy day for the country and even for this particular region. The very first uh, chief of the defense force from the region uh, having rested and being laid to rest today, the uh, body uh, expected to be at the Kisumu International uh, Airport by now and the convoy making its way to this village in uh, Ngia uh, where he will be laid to rest. What can you tell us from where you are, Mosame? Uh, here at the Kisumu International Airport where we are anxiously waiting for uh, the uh, procession of the body, that, uh, the procession that is carrying the body of France, uh, CDF France Ogola. The body arrived here at the Kisumu International Airport at around 7.40 uh, using a military chopper that uh, brought them. Then we had uh, uh, the house that we is expected to carry the body also making its way to the airport. This is the gate here. If my camera person Jesse Chinga could be able to get uh, this gate here. This is the gate that we expect the procession will be making away from the airport here in Kisumu. Remember, according to the program, the body was supposed to leave this place at exactly 8 a.m. It is already 8.15 uh, meaning that uh, it, the program has slightly delayed. We were here at around 5 a.m. and we could already meet senior officers from the KDF already to receive the body. And we speak, as we speak, they are also waiting on the other side of this airport to just make sure as a way of giving the right, last respect to their uh, boss, uh, they do that with the dignity. And therefore, we don't exactly know the time that they'll be leaving that place, but we are waiting from this particular point to make sure that we just give you up to speed with what will be happening. Uh, as soon as the procession will be making its way, we are going to give you all the details of what will be happening. But uh, the journey, remember the journey from here, Kisumu to Nia, is our, around one, one hour or one and a half hours actually. Uh, the journey from that to using the road, uh, it is around one and a half hours and therefore we will be uh, accompanying uh, that uh, team all the way to Nia where the brief ceremony will be held before uh, Francis Ogola, the general, is laid to rest. And therefore, uh, like we promised earlier, we will be uh, uh, keeping tabs here.
to make sure that we give you up to speed with what will be happening. Uh, but for now, we are waiting to see the procession leave the airport uh, towards his rural home in Ingia. Uh, we do understand uh, that uh, before maybe the body is transported because it came using the casket and like his wishes were it was supposed to be uh, put in uh, just a shawl and therefore we expect that that's, that's, those are some of the things that maybe are delaying the procession because uh, they said that they will be strict with the time. It's already 8.16 now and uh, we do expect that they'll just try to fasten so that they don't it into a lot of time but uh, this is the gate like i rightfully mentioned that we are waiting outside because the body will be making its way from the airport through this gate uh, something else that uh, we have also seen the team we have also seen the team of uh, deputy president the Shagwa also just waiting outside the airport we don't understand if he will be part of the dignitaries that will be receiving the body here at the airport. We will be giving you the, those details as they happen. But for now, we are keeping tabs here at the airport and we'll be briefing you as things unfold. Uh, uh, Well, thank you very much, uh, Zakius Mwasame, for that update from the Kisumu International Airport. Uh, like you have said, that, that is where the body of Francis Ogola will be leaving in terms of that convoy. And then it will take the 60-kilometer journey to the Senator Obama Kogelo Primary School here in Nyia Village. This is in Alego Songa constituency in uh, Siaya County. It is, like I said, 60 kilometers coming all the way from the Kisumu airport, coming the, uh, the route of Kisian. Then they will be coming all the way to this particular place. So at that particular time, of course, uh, the convoy will be there, but according to the PS Interior, uh, Raymond Omolo, there will be minimal uh, interruption or minimal disruption of the free flow of traffic on that particular uh, route because the committee that has been planning this has planned it with military precision, much as it is, they just had 72 hours to plan this because according to the wish of General Francis Ogola, the chief of the Defense Force of the Republic of Kenya, he wanted to be laid to rest 72 hours after his death. And that is what has happened here. This is the very first time that the country is witnessing the funeral of a serving chief of the Defense Force. And like we earlier indicated, all the military activities will happen uh, from here. It is likely a repeat of yesterday because most of the activities that we saw yesterday are the same that will be done today. And I'll be taking you uh, through these particular activities in uh, uh, some few minutes. But like I said, it is uh, all the honors that should be accorded to a four-star general. Because remember, uh, left, uh, General uh, uh, Francis Ogola is a four-star general, the only four-star general the country has. Uh, and he will be accorded all the honors that comes with not only a four-star general, but also a serving chief of the Defense Force. I want to quickly tell you some of those uh, military rights that will be, uh, military burial rights that will be taking place here uh, from between 1 p.m. to 1.55 p.m. Uh, there shall be a procession parade to the grave site at Moore Village in Siaya County. That is about six kilometers uh, from where we are, like I said, at the burial site. Only about 50 people will be allowed uh, owing to the space there. And these people will include the commander-in-chief, his entourage, uh, top military officers, as well as crew family members of General Francis Ogola. Then uh, uh, at there, there shall be a reveal uh, that will uh, take place by the military again at, uh, at that particular uh, place. Then we shall have 
a one minute uh, silence, observation of one minute of silence in honor of uh, uh, General Francis Ogola, uh, then there shall be a last post. You will remember uh, that all this occurred yesterday in honor of the general. Then there shall be uh, the 19 gun salute. The 19 gun salute is two uh, gun salutes, uh, sh two shy of the one accorded to the head of state or, and uh, because that is a 21 gun salute so today we shall be having a 19 gun salute before uh, laying of the wreaths and the national anthem after which the commander in chief will be leaving at his own pleasure now to give you uh, some uh, pointers about or some highlights of general ogola's career and his life he was born on the 12th of february in 1962, he was born from here in Siaya County and he was enlisted into the Kenya Defense Forces as an officer cadet on the 2nd of May 1984. Actually, that means that in about 10 days he would be clocking 40 years in service. Uh, that is on the, second, on the 2nd of May 2024, he would be clocking 40 years of service because he was enlisted on the 2nd of May 1984. But also let me remind you that uh, his death came 355 days after uh, he was uh, promoted to the rank of general and appointed the chief of the defense force. So he would be marking his one year anniversary on the 29th of uh, April 2024. That is in about nine days now, or eight days. But as uh, God had planned, General Gola is today being laid to rest. On the 3rd of May 1985, uh, General Ogola was commissioned as a second lieutenant upon which he was posted to Moi Air Base where he later uh, trained as a pilot. And during his career at the KDF, uh, he held several commands and uh, command staff and instructional, instructional appointments. This is according to his eulogy. In command, <coughs> excuse me, in command, he was the commanding officer, like Kipia Air Base Tactical Flight Wing, in uh, 2007, and uh, also the base commander, like Kipia Air Base, from 2008 to 2012. He was later uh, promoted to a brigadier on the 10th of April 2012. Remember, now this is with the new constitution, <coughs> and he was promoted to a brigadier and appointed the Deputy Air Force Commander, and later on promoted to Major General on the 13th day of July 2018, and he was appointed the Commander of the Kenya Air Force. On the 23rd of July 2021, he was also promoted to the rank of Lieutenant General and appointed the Vice Chief of the Defense Forces, a position he held until the 18th of April 2023 when he was promoted to the rank of general and appointed the chief of the defense forces so that is the brief uh, actually detailed 40-year career of uh, general francis ogola within the kenya defense force i should remind you that he is the fourth chief of the defense force of the republic of kenya because that is a position that was introduced upon the promulgation of the Constitution in 2010, because before that, the head of the military was uh, the chief of general staff. Uh, and uh, in this particular position, uh, the uh, chief of the defense force, rather, uh, General Ogola is the fourth, having uh, been preceded by the first who was uh, General uh, Julius Karangi, then there was General uh, Samson Mwathefe, there was General Robert Kiboshi, who is the immediate former uh, Chief of the Defense Force, and then currently uh, now deceased General uh, Francis Ogola. Let me introduce uh, Roslyn Obala back to uh, this set to discuss what we expect. Already I have seen military officers uh, at the vicinity. They have taken uh, position. Also, some other senior government officials around uh, P.S. Raymond Omolo has been here for about two hours since 6 a.m. And uh, by now, the, uh, we have spoken to Mosame. Uh, the convoy, by the time we were speaking to Mosame, had not left uh, the airport, but it should be here uh, by at least 
30 minutes after it leaves the airport. But already you can see the attendance that we are having. The people here, the locals are already here. Some government officials, some ex-government officials, uh, politicians have taken positions. Uh, officers who are leading several government agencies. And the president will be here by 9.45. But even as we go through this, there is now the assignment that has been left by General Ogola. One is uh, the assignment on Operation Maliza Wahalifu, which is a joint assignment with the Ministry of Interior. Then there are the other assignments. Our military is supposed to actually draw from Somalia uh, later this year. And uh, the all other military activities. Remember President William Ruto yesterday said that the general wanted to see the military move to the next advanced stage in terms of uh, equipment and technology. And he said that he was to unveil something by May during the pass out parade. So what would you expect in terms of the assignments that have been left? Of course, there is no vacuum. Uh, the military uh, pro continues with its activities. But in terms of, and what would you expect in terms of honoring the vision that General Ogola had on the military, one and on all the assignments that the, the KDF was taking? Uh, Ibrahim, uh, remember you just uh, said that there is no vacuum. Uh, but here we are having, for the first time, a general dying in office. So that again takes us back to the succession of the military. You know, we have the KDF uh, laws that dictates that. And also we have the Tonje rules that we have observed for quite some time since uh, uh, Daudi Tonje was the uh, general. So because of that, we know that the National Defense Council will have to have a meeting and also decide on the succession plan. Remember, General Ogola was from the formation of the Air Force. Now, General Ogola, Ada, they will have uh, we, the current lieutenant generals that we have are drawn from the Kenya Army and the Kenya Navy. So because of that, again, we'll have to see how the succession happened. But beyond that, the president himself talked about the dream of the general. And that, uh, you know, every institution uh, transition is not for the sake of it. So it means that whoever will come there, they are laid down procedures and the plan that he was working through, because remember the president said he was supposed to do some launch in May. So the paperwork is already there. It is now who to carry that vision. And I believe General Logola was not working alone. He had his vice CDF. He had the three service uh, officers uh, leading the three formations. That is the Kenya Air Force, Kenya Navy, and Kenya Army. So through that team, they will be able to carry through the vision of General Logola. Remember, the commander-in-chief himself has committed to see this through. He also talked about equipping the military. And this has been a conversation that we've had even in the media when we have covered some of the operations of the military. And I think the hardware has been one of them, especially during the time that we had deployed our troops to Somalia to secure the region. And also we had our troops in aircraft that uh, was in Goma. So Kenya has been prone and credited with security operations across the region and even internationally. And I think that is why even in terms of even the leaders that were able to eulogize the general, they had something to say about the service to humanity and service to the region and to ensure that we have a global peace. Now, if you go again to the distinguished career of the general. You can actually see that some of the studies that he did, he was first a top diplomat because he did international studies, he did peace and security, he did in, uh, uh, counter terrorism. So these were some of the issues that the general was really committed to see through. And I'm sure the leaders that he has left, the service officers that he has left behind will carry through this dream. Well, and uh, even as uh, you say, the service officers, uh, we hope will carry on with this dream. You have brought in a very interesting conversation about succession at uh, the de uh, Department of Defense, uh, that is the uh, defense headquarters in Nairobi, uh, in terms of who takes charge. And uh, the president, uh, in uh, appointing General Logola, stated that he 
picked General Ogola because he was the best. He uh, deserved and merited that particular position. However, there have been talks about the traditions that uh, have been with the military in terms of who becomes the next CDF. Uh, you know, the rotational nature as introduced by Daudi Tonje. But then again, President William Ruto is on record saying that, look, in appointing General Agola, I looked at the merits. Remember, the Daudi Tonje are just traditions. They're not written, uh, any written law. So what would you expect? Uh, because this is a conversation that will be had in the next uh, coming days when the National Defense uh, Council sits. Uh, and uh, perhaps they have already advised the president on uh, the next uh, potential uh, CDF. What would you expect? Um, you know, Ibrahim, I think uh, first we need to understand how the, the structure of the Kenya Defense Forces. We have the commissioned officers and we have the non-commissioned officers. That is why we have the private and we have the warrant officers. Then we have the commissioned officers, where we start from second lieutenant up to the general, where we have the five foster general. Now, in this case, we have the three formations that I talked about. Remember, the commander in chief just did changes last month in March uh, 8th of month, and we had a new vice CDF. We had two new service commanders, which means we had uh, Tarus taking over from uh, 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 Lieutenant General Mbogo as the commander of Kenya Army. And we also had Thomas Nganga taking over as the commander Navy. So the only uh, service commander that was retained was actually John Omenda, who is the commander of the Air Force. So actually, if you look at the service commanders, we are actually having new officers coming on board. The vice CDF is new, uh, that is Charles uh, Kahariri. So that's why when I started, I said that when the National Defense uh, Council sits, then they will actually look at this. In the succession of the military, there is the experience, there is the age, and then you also look at now the tradition and the law. So all this will come in. Currently, we only have four lieutenant generals who are actually drawn from the army and also drawn from the navy. Now, in the succession line, the general from the, was from the Air Force. So it means the next line is the navy. So all these are things Things that are within the Daudi Tonje rules and also the traditions that we have observed for the years. All right, all right. I'll allow you to rest for some few minutes before uh, we are coming to you from the Senator Obama Kogelo Primary School in Nia Village in uh, Alego Songa constituency of Siaya County. This is where the uh, final activities in terms of laying uh, the service and laying to rest of uh, the chief of the defense force, General Francis Ogola, will be happening from. Uh, we have our team across uh, this particular region earlier on. We spoke to Zakius Masame, who is, or at that particular point, was at the Kisumu International Airport where uh, the convoy was set to leave and hit the road for 60 kilometers and get here in about 30 minutes from the time it will have left the airport. We shall also be speaking to Ouko Kusa, who will be at a different location to tell us what is happening on that particular side. But right now, let me update you on what is happening at the uh, venue. This is at the uh, Senator Obama Kogelo Primary School. Uh, senior military officers already here, uh, as you can see them, uh, donned in the military uh, gear or military fatigue. Uh, they uh, here lay, ready uh, to lay to rest their boss, their general, Francis Ogola. You can see at the uh, pavilion where the VIPs will be sitting already the president's or the presidential seat the deputy president's seat as well as every uh, other uh, dignitary seat has been placed and right now what is happening is that the programs are being placed on the different seats uh, if dennis could uh, actually uh, indicate or show what is happening then there are some uh, few 
top military officers in the, on the ground uh, because I, I know that military officers from the rank uh, of general will be coming with that particular convoy here because even later they will be the ones to, uh, they will be the pallbearers. This is the tradition of the military that one is actually accorded the last respect by his peers or people of, of, of his rank. So we expect uh, it is generals who will be uh, pallbearers later today at that uh, final uh, resting place where they will only be allowing a maximum, like we are told, of 50 persons owing to the space there. Uh, but the pictures on your screen are of the venue. This is, I repeat, uh, the Senator Obama primary, uh, Senator Obama Kogelo Primary School in uh, Siaya County. This is a Lego Songa constituency. Uh, guests arriving. Uh, already I can see the Secretary of State uh, functions, that is Michael Gitonga, having a word with uh, some uh, of the officers here uh, in terms of just making sure the final preparations, the last program uh, goes according to plan. I can also see uh, the presidential security. This is a presidential escort already having... Uh, taking charge of uh, the uh, dais and the pavilion where the VIPs uh, will be sitting. Lots of security checks having already uh, been done. Uh, locals are already here. Uh, some of them have already taken their seats as it was expected in the uh, program. Uh, locals have already uh, taken their seats. And uh, just to again update you on what is happening uh, what should be happening by now is that uh, upon arrival of the body at the Obama Kogelo Primary School uh, here in Nia Village, Siaya County, 15 minutes later, the Commander-in-Chief, uh, President William Ruto, will be arriving here to lead the final journey uh, in honor of uh, uh, General Francis Ogola. So uh, President William Ruto expected here from around 9.45 uh, AM. Uh, looking at, uh, like I said, the program is uh, really, really, really tight in terms of who gets to speak here. Remember, the PS, uh, Raymond Molo, indicating that there'll be no politics here. Uh, so politicians, even if some national leaders may be given an opportunity to address, they will be required to avoid uh, uh, any uh, political discussion uh, from here. So President William Ruto, uh, Deputy President Rigadi Gashagua, uh, Prime Cabinet Secretary Musale Mudavadi, former Prime Minister Raila Odinga, uh, the Minister of Defense, Aden Duale, uh, maybe uh, some of the leaders that we may see speak, but strictly in honor of General uh, Francis Ogola. Of course, all this again is at the discretion of the President. He is the Commander-in-Chief, and it is upon his magnanimity and his discretion that he gets to allow uh, the other persons to speak uh, if, again, they will commit to uh, not having any uh, political discussions here. But like I said, it, is, uh, it has been a tough uh, about three days of national mourning since uh, the country uh, had the news of that uh, fatal uh, uh, crash that happened in Elgeo Maraquet County, Sindar area in Kaben location. And uh, for the past three days, flags have been flying half-mast in honor of uh, not only General Ogola, but also his entire entourage. Remember, we as well lost nine other gallant soldiers in the helicopter crash in Elgeo, Maraquet County. I mentioned their names earlier. President William Ruto has actually indicated that the two who were in hospital are right now uh, in fair condition, even urging the country to pray for those soldiers who are recuperating in hospital. Already some of uh, those who died alongside General Ogola have been laid to rest. Uh, already Brigadier Saidi was laid to rest in uh, Kilifi County, Utange. And uh, the, the other uh, burial programs are still going on uh, at different parts of the country where these officers came from. More announcements being made, uh, announcements in Voluo, announcements as well in English and Swahili. So we shall be telling you, uh, even uh, as... Even as this, uh, uh, 
uh, what these announcements say, what the directions are. I can see right now some uh, of the, uh, more of the close friends, family members are also still arriving. But uh, we will be taking a short break from here at the uh, uh, Senator Obama Kogelo Primary School to just have a sip of water, then come back and show you what uh, is happening from here. But remember, all activities are expected to go uh, to plan. I don't know if I'm able to speak to I don't know if I'm able to speak to the Secretary of State Functions. I don't know if I'm able to speak to you very briefly, live on NTV, uh, in terms of what we expect, uh, uh, how the program looks like. And uh, earlier we spoke on phone and you said that the space at the burial site may not accommodate as many people, so it will be a limited number. Perhaps you may want to tell our viewers so that at home they know what will be happening here. Well, uh, the expectation so far is uh, at 0945. Uh, we're expecting the Commander-in-Chief uh, to arrive. Then at uh, that point, we begin the procession here. We are looking to having a fairly short church service. Uh, all will be done here. Then we proceed to the graveside. As you have mentioned, we do have very, very, very limited space at the graveside. So it's still very fluid uh, in terms of who's going to go to the graveside. Uh, but we'll get that information as we go along. So it's 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 very fluid. It's, of course, the given the the squeezed time frame we've had to prepare, um, it, 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 to it has uh, now made sure that we you know we try and work on everything very very quickly. And as a result, everything is happening by the hour by the minute. So even information, I don't have the full information right now. But as time you know um, 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 proceeds, we continue to you know uh, get clarity on the, how the program is going to. To run but generally we want to start at 10 we are hoping that in an in two to two to three hours maximum we'll be done with the church service then proceed to the graveside all right thank you mike mike gitonga is the secretary of state's functions uh telling us just how the program looks like and even telling us uh, or as, uh, just uh, buttressing that at the burial site the space is very limited and so only about uh, 50 persons will be allowed he says that owing to the few hours of preparation, remember all this has had to happen within 72 hours. They are still playing it by the ear and by the hour to uh, make sure everything goes to plan. So he wouldn't really give details of what exactly uh, the program looks like. Uh, and he will, of course, be communicating as it happens. So Michael Gitonga, Secretary uh, State's fu State Functions, uh, speaking to us on NTV. But allow us to take a break uh, here on uh, this particular barrio. We will be coming back after very, very few minutes to keep updating you on what is happening here. It is the uh, final journey. It is the final uh, honors that are being given to Kenya's hero, a man who has dedicated 40 years of service to the country. This is from 1984 as a military man and uh, unfortunately lost his life in that chopper crash uh, three days ago in Sindar area uh, of Elgeo Marakwet County. So we had, uh, I'm being advised before we take that break, Zakius Mosame, who earlier on was joining us from the Kisumu International Airport, has an update. Uh, Mosame, the convoy is expected to take about 30 minutes to get here. And uh, it is a 60-kilometer journey. By the time we spoke to you earlier, it had not left. What do we have to know so far? Well, we are still keeping tabs here at the Kisumu International Airport. It's 8.45 p.m. We expected the body to be leaving this particular place to his rural home in here at exactly eight. That has not happened. We are yet to learn what exactly is happening. But from a distance, if I can be able to get a glimpse of what is happening, the uh, plane that carried the remains of Major uh, of General Ogola uh, is the other side there, and there's a brief uh, what you call a guard of honor has been prepared there. That is indicating that the body is just uh, being moved from the plane, maybe to the house that will then be used to transport the body to his rural home. Uh, we are yet to learn what exactly may be led to the delay, uh, but that will be communicated later. For now, what we can report is that 
we can see if I don't know if my camera person Jesse Chinga can be able to get those pictures from a distance. We have been barred from accessing that area. We are trying to get those pictures from a distance. But uh, what we can see is that uh, uh, they are, there's a group of army officers. They are making a brief guard of honor just maybe to uh, pay that last respect as they transport the body to the house. We do understand that this is a majorly uh, military event and it's going to follow all the military protocols to the latter. And that's why in every step they have to show that kind of the that, uh, that this is a person uh, that they respected because remember this is the first time uh, CDF is dying in office and these are things that they're also doing to just uh, appreciate the effort that may uh, General Ogola uh, put in place. Uh, maybe later on, like uh, we had also mentioned that uh, the distance from this place to Nia is about one and a half hours. Uh, this will actually have an implication on the timing. It is going to affect the, uh, the rest of the program for the day. Like uh, we mentioned earlier, the body was supposed to leave this place at around 8 a.m. It's already 8.47. That means that it's already 47 minutes late and therefore they'll have to maybe make up for the time that has already been lost here we still are observing i don't know if the body has left not yet uh, they have not removed the body from the plane to the house uh, we will maybe be in position we are also told that uh, Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa is uh, one of the uh, dignitaries receiving that body uh, there inside the, the airport and uh, that we had mentioned earlier that he had arrived here early. He is actually there. He's one of the dignitaries receiving uh, uh, General Francis Ogola's body here at the Kisumu International Airport. Uh, maybe something else. Uh, the weather here is uh, actually gloomy and uh, we don't know if it's going to be uh, friendly to allow the ceremony to, to go on as planned or it will be disruptive. Remember this region, the Nyasa region, usually experiences convectional rainfall and therefore we are hoping that the weather will be friendly to allow this ceremony to go on as uh, planned. So, all right, uh, we will look, be looking into other details there, but remember, this is a military event, and uh, remember, this is an issue that maybe everything is limited, including information is limited, because uh, we have not been given sufficient information here as uh, to why or what uh, has led to the delays. But we'll be learning that later as the day goes by because it was not even meant to take long here. It was just meant to uh, maybe receive the body and then put it in the house. It goes to near where uh, General Francis Ogola will be laid to rest. But we are keeping tabs to just make sure that we give you up to speed with what will be happening, including maybe what led to the delay of the arrival of the body, despite the fact that the program read that the body will be leaving this particular place at exactly 8 a.m. It's 8.50 already. The body has not yet left, but uh, that is not a serious concern because it can easily be made up. Just see if you can be able also to get uh, the other side. Uh, we can see that uh, there's a lot of uh, maybe uh, colleagues that are waiting. We can have the securities actually beefed up properly. The other side also we have the military police cars that are waiting on standby to just make sure that they give the escort. Uh, uh, the other side. This is a serious team there. They are in serious combat there. Uh, is a record squad there also waiting there to make sure that they give the general the escort that he deserves. Uh, on the other side, Jesse, if we can also be able to get that, uh, yes, well, this is inside, uh, just outside the airport. The parking lot uh, is full of these kind of cars that are waiting to give General Frank Sogola a befitting send off. Of course, it will start from here. We have also had a number of dignitaries making their way inside the airport where we have been stopped not to access anyway. But 
we can still do this from outside here because uh, this is our pleasure. Uh, we can, as you can see, there are still, the, most of the dignitaries are still arriving here. These are closed. Just so you can, if you can be able to move, thank you. Uh, that's okay. Uh, so that you can give them space to make their way. Uh, this is actually, uh, the, uh, we have seen the communication in the midst of defense. That is uh, Mugambi, an indication that the CS is not very far. CS is not very far. CS is not very far. This is the family car. Oh, family car. Uh, they are going to pick the... The family car for General Gola. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. We are just told that these uh, these cars that are making is uh, uh, carrying the family, uh, the family for Major uh, Francis Ogola. The I think that is the reason. Maybe they had delayed to release the body. They are making their way inside there. Uh, we have been told that those are cars family carrying the, the family for Major uh, General uh, Francis Ogola, and therefore. We are also now waiting. Maybe their arrival will fasten things, maybe. It will fasten things because it's important the fact that the family actually is available, is present. It's important the family is present for uh, this uh, particular uh, kind of event because this is the time they're giving the last respect and they are the people that are given priority despite the fact that it's a military event. Uh, but the family has a very, very important role to play in the last send-off of General Francis Ogola. I think in the interest of maybe the space inside there and the, also the restriction of the airport, they have not been able to allow very many vehicles to make their way inside there. Uh, we also need to know who is where and who doing what. <laughs> Uh, so that is it. Uh, it is already late by almost uh, uh, 53 minutes. 8.53 now. We, the event is already late by almost 53 minutes, but we hope that they are going to make up for that time that has been lost. We mentioned that the entry that I just entered there is carrying the family for the lead general, Francis Ogola, and uh, indeed they have made their way to where the body is. Yes, we can be able to see from a distance. And uh, yes, yes, we can be able to see that. Some cons bit of consultation here and there. It is understood. It is acceptable. Uh, in a time of uh, this, uh, you can see people consulting here and there, trying to just make sure that everything is placed before the body leaves this place for near that is in Siaya County. Uh, yes, like my colleagues earlier mentioned, uh, it is something that uh, we are going to be very keen and passionate in making sure that we update you with every detail. And uh, it was supposed to maybe at uh, at eight it was supposed to be arrival and reception of the body here at the airport. We have mentioned that it's already late. Maybe they'll make up for that time. Uh, it was also supposed to be at 9. All guests were supposed to be seated at Obama Kogelo Primary School near village that's in Sierra County. And uh, uh, that will be also be happening later. For now, the, uh, we can see that uh, they are making some sort of salutes. The other side, officers uh, dressed in uh, navy blue uniform there. There's a KDF officers trying to do that. We can also see uh the clergy making the way to where the body is maybe to make a prayer yes we have the clergy that has been here from around seven from 6 30 to 7 now they're making there maybe indicating that now they're coming to the uh, event of just getting the body to the house before it's transported to the village in here and therefore we are keeping tabs outside here I wish we were allowed there. I wish we were allowed there. I wish we were allowed there. We could have told you uh, better than this, but this is the best we can get for now. And uh, we can still see from a distance what is happening, actually, uh, because uh, uh, this is a very serious matter of concern to us, and we also need to bring this to you.
uh, from the comfort of your home. Yes, uh, they are making those uh, staccato steps towards the body. And it Jesse uh, Cheng is just concerned uh, that uh, he wishes he could have got it. But you can still get these pictures, Jesse. Thank you so much. You can move a bit small. There. Thank you. Yes. There you can be able to get those pictures to, to show our viewers what is actually happening there. Can you be able to zoom and get those pictures? Yes. Because it's happening at this time there. Uh, I don't know if, if Jesse can be able to get there. Not really. Uh, if you can move close, Kiasi, thank you. You can just move there. Uh, thank you. There you can be able to get at least what is happening there. Yes. I think uh, after that uh, short event there, yes, they're making some movements, maybe. Uh, this will culminate into now transferring the body to the house and later on the body of course it will get out through this gate we are just anxiously waiting outside this gate because the body and the entrance will get out using this gate and that's why we are strategically placed here to make sure that we give you those pictures as they happen and it's important that we actually show you this uh, well, we this is Kisumu International Airport, and uh, we are waiting for General Francis Ogola's body as it leaves uh, the airport to his rural home. We can now see these gentlemen getting active. They were a bit. Songa pole pole, Jesse. Thank you. Uh, there's a, a bit of push and pull here, and uh, sometimes it, it may compromise the quality of our pictures, but that's not a serious issue. We will be making up for that. Yes, the guard of honor that was there now is making its way out of that place. And uh, they are now preparing the way for the body to live here at the Kisumu International Airport. We believe that uh, any time from now the body will be leaving the airport using this gate because uh, it is, has taken a bit of uh, time it has delayed a bit and uh, we do understand that they were waiting for the family which just made its way inside that place a few minutes ago the family of, of the lead general uh, Francis Ogola just made its way there and maybe that's why they were making some delays to just accommodate them and once uh, they made their way there we have seen the guard that was uh, marching there has been cleared we might not be able to see the other side because of where the place where we are there's a building that's actually blocking us the new building that was put up in the at the airport is actually blocking us from seeing exactly what is happening but from where i stand just say if you can make a short move so that we can mm. thank you so that is it. Uh, yes, uh, like we rightly mentioned, this is the gate that uh, the body will be using to leave the airport to the village. The body arrived and uh, they have prepared, they have already transported the body to the house. And uh, I think what is remaining is now the body leaving this uh, airport to the village. We mentioned earlier that the distance or the, rather the time that maybe one could cover using the car from the airport here in Kisumu to Nia in Sierra is about one and a half hours. 
and at the time the interest will be making the way. And uh, we asked some of the organizers why did they choose maybe to use the road to the village. They say that it will be part of giving the last respect of the residents of this region to the fallen hero. Uh, because by using the road, some of the people who might not even be able to view the body, they will watch the uh, interview as it makes its way to Siaya, just as a way of giving the last respect of the residents of this region. And therefore, one was asking, why didn't they use the uh, plane maybe to transport the body to the village? Some of the answers are that uh, they wanted also to give an opportunity to the people of this region, of Nyanza region, to bid farewell, not even, uh, though not physically, for those who might not be able to make to uh, the graveyard, because we have told that because of the size of the, 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 the homestead, only 50 people will be allowed at the graveyard. But then the people of this region have been given an opportunity, especially those along the Kisumu Siaya Road, will be able to just watch the entry as it makes its way to near in Siaya. Any time from now, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will be uh, seeing the body leave JK, uh, sorry, not JK, Kisumu International Airport, where uh, we are anxiously waiting uh, to near village via this gate. Uh, once it uh, comes, we will be able to give you those pictures in full to make sure that you get a glimpse of what is happening here. We also mentioned earlier that we are yet to learn maybe what has caused the further delay because we do understand that uh, the other time the family of the late uh, General Franz Zogola had not arrived. It had just come in and uh, they have been accommodated there. Uh, of course, the military protocols have been followed and they're still being followed to the latter. We can see the riders, the motorbike riders, who were supposed to be ahead to clear the traffic, getting into their position now. Uh, an indication, the gate is now also being opened here. Uh, just see if you can be able to get now. The gate has been opened, uh, an indication that uh, any time from now, the body of the lead General Francis Ogola will be leaving uh, this particular place to his rural home in Siaya County. Yes, this gate initially was closed, and now you can, you can see it has been opened by these gentlemen here uh, around. And I'll ask that gentleman, you can just move up closer so that you can be able to get that. Thank you so much for responding. Uh, the gate has been opened, an indication that any time from now, uh, the remains of the late General Francis Ogola will be leaving Kisumu International Airport to his home in Siaya County. Yes, those gentlemen, the riders of the motorbike have got it into position, like I mentioned earlier, and I can still see them getting ready uh, on onto their motorbikes to just uh, clear the way, the traffic, and these are not uh, they are military motorbikes, uh, military police motorbikes. They are not the normal traffic police motorbikes that are going to lead. This is a military event and there is going to be done in the military way. It's important to uh, note that and that's why we are keen to give you every detail of what will be happening right from here in Kisumu up to uh, CII. I remember NTV and national media crew has planted they are a bunch of their journalists all over because we have our team uh, that is split all over. We have uh, a team here. Uh, we have a team here to give you the details. We have a team all the way will be accompanying uh, the body all the way at its makes the way, its way to Siaya, and then we have a very strong team of Ibrahim Karanja, Rosino Bala, and the entire team of the Nation Media crew there to give you the details of this particular funeral that has got in the country by surprise. But then it is important that the CDF is given a befitting send-off by Kenyans and those uh, that matter. We are still waiting here. 
at uh, the gate so that we get it and therefore as we wait for that time of the entry to leave the gate here at the Kisumu International Airport I'd like now to pass over this button to my colleague Ibrahim Karanja who is actually in Sia Ibrahim well thank you very much Mosame from the Kisumu International Airport we are still here at the Senator Obama Kogelo primary school uh, where uh, we are still awaiting the activities to start uh, where Mosame is at the Kisumu International Airport Roslyn uh, I am reliably informed that the body of General Francis Ogola has since arrived and uh, is currently being loaded into the gun carrier and will be in the next few minutes taking that 30 minute journey to this place 60 kilometers to here so it also means that we are not so far from the activities here starting but perhaps to brief our viewers on what you have noted so far from here um, Ibrahim, since we came in the morning, you've seen the security are trying to control the people who are coming here. So many people have turned up to actually see the final send-off of General Ogola. The family members are here. You can see the military officers are here. Uh, there is a preparation from his home where we expect that the body will be brought to his home before it is actually brought to Senator Obama Primary School where they're going to do the memorial service here before they take the body for interment at his home at Moor Village here in Nia Alego Usonga constituency. And that village is about six kilometers from here. We yeah. are passed by the general's home with you. Yes. And uh, it is uh, reported that according to the space at that particular point, then not so many people uh, will be allowed to get to the burial site. And that's why uh, even for us uh, as the media, we have yeah. had to make arrangements yeah. on how only some few of us will be allowed to cover that for the benefit of our viewers at home mm -hmm. who may want to follow these particular proceedings from CIA County. But the journey from Kisumu uh, International Airport to here is 60 kilometers, yes. about 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, by 9.45, we expect uh, that the Commander-in-Chief, President William Ruto, will be seated here. And as you notice, the closer we get to that moment where the body of the General gets here and the Commander-in-Chief gets here, the tighter the security looks. Uh, yeah. You would uh, agree <laughs> with me that right now yeah. it is a bit difficult to even cross yeah. uh, across the, the pavilion. Yes. But take us through that journey. Uh, this is a journey that the general would take many times, multiple times, as he came home. We have heard from close uh, uh, people who interacted with him that he loved to drive. Remember even yesterday at the airport, those, uh, th th that's the kind of details we used to get. So take us through that journey, mm -hmm. that the final journey that he's going to have by road from Kisumu to here. Uh, Ibrahim, this is going to be the general's last journey. We've said that he'd made this journey so many times uh, when he used to drive home uh, from his main assignment. And remember, today was actually supposed to be a different event for, for the general. He was supposed to be opening the, uh, the church today, but that has not been the case. Instead, we are going to have his final send off today. So the general used to come through Kisumu Airport. That is where the body has actually landed now and take the route from Kisumu through to Kisian either through uh, Busia Road or the Bondo Road. So it will depend with which road uh, the, the procession will take either to come through Bondo uh, to, uh, to the, uh, Senator Obama Primary School or through Nia that might pass through his home and his father's home. Uh, some of the organizers are telling us that the body might pass through his father's home before it actually comes here. And then by 1 p.m., uh, that is the time that they are looking at it to have finished the funeral service to be able to go and deter the general back home. So that, that means, uh, Rosalind, if, and these are the options that we are giving our viewers uh, yeah. to understand the journey that uh, the general might take here. Yeah. If he will have to be taken home first, then the closest route to his father's home 
is a route through uh, 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 through Luanda yes. coming all the way to Nia. That is Busia Road and Luanda coming to Nia yes. to his father's home, then comes to uh, Senator Obama uh, Primary School. Yes. However, if he is to come straight to this place, then he will not have to go the Luanda way. He will come to from Kisumu Airport to Kisian, then make the turn. And then to Dori, then to this place. Then to this place. So yeah. those are the options yeah. that we will be observing uh, yeah. how it goes. Yeah. Uh, don't mind the noise at the background. That is the music, of course, being played here in uh, uh, the mood of, uh, you know, the last respects for General Francis Ogola, who is being laid to rest here at the age of 61. By February of next year, yeah. he should have turned 62. 62. He should have actually be exiting, exiting from, yeah. uh, from, yeah. from the KDF. But, but it also depends on the discretion of the commander-in-chief. He might have gotten another one-year extension. Yes, there is a provision yes. for a one-year extension. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, I think from what we have heard, the addresses being made, he was a man who was committed to ensure that by the time he leaves, yeah. he leaves a mark that will be remembered forever. Yes. And nonetheless, I think even at his exit, though premature, there is a mark that will remain forever. And that mark is the resilience and the commitment that he puts in our military, Rosalind. Yeah. You know, Ibrahim, even as we uh, send the general home, you know, once you are a soldier, you are a soldier. And once you are, co you are commissioned, then you prepare to exit. So you can even hear from the general's family, they were prepared for the exit. So it didn't come as a surprise. So whatever he had started, he had made ways on how it, uh, it is going to be completed. But remember, the mark he has made will be remembered for a very long time. And this being that this is the first time that we are having a general die in active duty, it will also be part of our history that this is the first time this has happened and how did it happen. Now the legacy that he has left behind is what the people he mentored will have to actually nurture and proceed with it in remembrance of what he had actually started. All right. And uh, thank you, Rosalind Obala. Rosalind Obala, the political editor at the Nation Media Group, uh, alongside the entire team here that is bringing to you this coverage only on uh, the platforms of the Nation Media Group, NTV, uh, at Nation of Africa, and all the other Nation Media Group, uh, Nation Media Group platforms. Uh, just to tell you about who I have spotted so far, Rosalind, yeah. I can see a number of members of parliament who have now started arriving for a while. Uh, elected leaders had not started trooping in, and maybe I'll give you that opportunity to also speak to some of the members of parliament briefly uh, to honor uh, the uh, general. Perhaps uh, if, if you can get to them. Uh, even, uh, get, uh, the, the area MP. Yes, even as Rosalind Obala uh, gets the members of parliament who have started arriving. For some uh, moments, the elected leaders had not uh, come here, but now, right now, they are here. I have seen. Nairobi uh, a woman representative. I have seen Nairobi woman. Rep uh, I, 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 what what is on your screen right now is that the body of uh, General Francis Ogola is currently leaving the Kisumu International Airport, and that there is the last journey that he is making. The body of General Francis Ogola right there leaving the Kusumu International Airport for this particular place, his home village in Alego Songa constituency. Uh, you can see that, of course, it is given all the military honors and accompanied by military officers. Such a sad moment for the country, a very heavy uh, moment to bear uh, that uh, we are laying to rest a serving chief of the Defense Force, General Francis Ogola, and that journey that has started right now, if I am to look at my uh, time, it is about 9.15. So in about 30 minutes, that particular convoy should be here, and General Francis Ogola will have arrived at his home village of Nia, where he will be laid to rest not so far 
from where we are. Those are live pictures that you are getting from NTV. The body of General Francis Ogola leaving the Kisumu International Airport. Our Zakius Mosame is there and accompanying that particular convoy. We will be uh, occasionally crossing over to him to tell us where the, he is and uh, uh, where he is and uh, where, uh, how or the route that they will have taken, like Rosario Bala said, there are two options. In case uh, uh, they would want to go by his father's home, then the closest route would be the Busia Road, then make a turn in Luanda and come all the way to Nia. But if they were to come straight to the Senator Obama primary, Kogelo primary school here, then uh, the route to use would be Busia Road, then make a turn at Kisian and come all the way to this particular place. 60 kilometers, the last journey that the general is taking. But I want, even as we see uh, the live pictures, even as we talk over the live pictures that you are seeing, the pictures right now, the pictures on your screen right now uh, is of the general, uh, the general's body leaving the airport. But Rosalind Obala, you are joined by uh, members, members of parliament here who have started arriving. But I also to inform you, uh, the body of General Ogola right now, the pictures on your screens is of the body leaving the Kisumu International Airport. We have our Zakius Mosame there, but Rosalind, take it away. Uh, thank you, Ibrahim. Actually, we are joined by the area MP. Uh, some attendee. Maybe just take us through the preparations. Now this is the last leg of uh, a general who I know you knew very close. I think that this is actually your constituency. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Uh, today is the day that we are sending off uh, the general. Uh, the program was very tight. As you are aware, the, the funeral occurred on Friday. And today is Sunday, barely uh, 72 hours since he passed on. So everything has been done. This is a state funeral. So our local community, we have had a limited uh, role in the funeral. But I'm happy with the arrangement that has been done uh, right from Nairobi. Uh, everything has gone on very well. So we're just here to uh, pay our last tribute and to see, send him off. Sir, uh, uh, the locals have said they want to come and have the final send-off. Remember, this is a mixture of a military send-off and the local send-off. We are also told that the home is very small, that they will have a limited number of people accessing. Being that even the way, the nature of the way the, the general had indicated that he should be buried, how many people will actually access that to actually be able to see how it will be done in his home? I think, I think uh, for the home, the, where the final burial rise will, will happen, that will be reserved for the family members. Uh, we have asked our community members to just come here at the, at the school, where we are going to have the, the service, the funeral service, and where we are going to make speeches. After that is done, then I think that will be the end for the community. We need to allow the family, the, the close family members and a few guests to be the one to witness the final rites at the home. Uh, the general has been said that he was doing so many community projects. Actually, today should have been a celebration of one of the projects that he has done. As the area MP, I know you know some of the projects that the general was undertaking. Maybe just to share some of them and the people who are actually going to be on a great loss with his departure. Yeah, the general did so many projects. Actually, we, me as the area MP, I worked closely with him. From the day he was appointed the commander of the Air Force, we became close. And our closeness was basically on development programs. We have, he has uh, constructed schools. The primary school where I went to, uh, Nduru Primary School, there's a time I requested him to come and support me, and he came and he renovated the entire school, the old school. He has been uh, involved in renovating near primary school, next to where his home is. He has also been involved in uh, uh, helping in some uh, to do some uh, infrastructure on the roads. Uh, there's an area down here where we had uh, a bridge which had collapsed. And the general came and uh, using his own resources, he was able to fix it. And away from that, general was very private. But in his privacy, he did so many things silently. Like when we were recruiting people in the army, I want to just tell you that the general did so much. But he was very careful that those things should not be announced. There are so many people he has recruited into the army from here. And he, did, he, was, he was doing it not for, for, the, for publicity, but he did it for just service to the community. 
Thank you so much, Mwishimiwa and Sole Sana. Uh, Ibrahim, we were just talking to the MP of Alego Usonga, and again he has brought us into the other side of general that we didn't know. He's saying he was a very private person, and there were so many things that he did for the community that he did not announce, but he was doing. So that just gives us another virtue of the general that we didn't know that he had because most of the time you'll find that people will actually be parading the people they've actually helped from where they come from but you hear that the general was doing some of the things that were very impactful but secretly that not so many knew about and that can be a testament to just how many people are trooping actually here to actually give him the final send-off Indeed, uh, by indication, the number of people who are here right now uh, being 9.21 a.m., it would mean that we are going to see a lot more people arriving. Because yeah. by 9.21, you uh, are right to say, if mm -hmm. I may use uh, that particular microphone, by, by this particular time, you are, are right to say that all the seats aside from the seats that have been indicated have been occupied and it is 9.21 p.m. Uh, a.m. rather. So we are sure that by the time the body arrives here, uh, the numbers will have swelled. And I'm saying that informed by the pictures that we are seeing accompanying the convoy because the pictures that we had on our screens moments earlier and perhaps one that our directors Mike and Jackie can show our viewers right now are of the people of Kisumu waiting by the roadside and you know celebrating like they normally would celebrate a hero those are the pictures that we have seen uh, we saw moments earlier because uh, th and that was right outside the airport so you can only imagine uh, the father that body leaves uh, the airport towards this particular area uh, by the time it gets to Kisian. Kisian is a very busy center uh, on, on any normal day so you can imagine the number of people who will accompany it aside from uh, uh, you know the protocol the programmed uh, uh, you know people who are supposed to accompany it there is also uh, those who will automatically follow for instance uh, just to lay or to have respect the last respects to 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 the, to the uh, fallen general so it would mean that this school and i i my, from my own uh, calculation this school can occupy more than 10,000 people, even without seats. It would mean that this school would be filled to the brim in the next few minutes. Actually, Ibrahim, if you have seen from what has been happening, from the time we came to the gate, from the time we came to the gate, you can actually see the way uh, the security officers, especially the KDF officers, were having challenges in terms of actually screening the people who are coming here. We were with you at the initial stages when they were doing the security uh, checks, when you we were actually asked to vacate the dome so that they were able to check uh, the security situation and be able to be convinced that everything is okay. The interior cabinet secretary was here earlier, and one of the reasons he was here was to ensure that even as we have so many people walk and troop into uh, this venue to send off the general, they are able to also screen and ensure everybody is secure. But just as we had said the routes, the possible routes that might be used, we know people will be milling along either through Kisian Road or Bondo Road, uh, whichever direction that the convoy will take. Remember again something that we didn't tell our viewers, is that if you look at the general, uh, the, the remains of the general are actually carried in the, the gun carrier. But remember the officers who are actually the ball bearers are major generals. So you can actually see the high stakes even in sending off the general. Being that this is a first, but in terms of military traditions, there is a lot that people are able to learn and acclimatize with what is happening today. Well, uh, this should be the Kisumu Busia Road, where the convoy of uh, carrying the remains of the late General Francis Ogola, the chief of the Defense Forces of the Republic of Kenya, uh, is currently headed to uh, his village, Nia village. Uh, this is uh, Senator Obama Kogelo Primary School. You can see the live pictures there. 
uh, our teams, Zakius Mosame and his crew are accompanying the uh, entourage and uh, will be updating us on where exactly uh, the uh, convoy gets to. Of course, the instructions here are still being given by the persons running the program and indicating that it is time for those who are within uh, the dome to sit. I would tell you, uh, like we had earlier mentioned, the dome is already uh, occupied. All the seats that were meant for the rest of the people are all occupied, save for the front seats, which were meant, meant for dignitaries, which haven't been occupied yet. All the other seats, including of the tents outside, have been occupied. The people you're seeing right in front of me are family members of the late uh, General Francis Ogola. And uh, on the other side will also be the close family members, the widow, the children of the General. President William Ruto, his deputy, Rigadi Gashagua, uh, Prime Cabinet uh, Secretary Musale Mudavadi, uh, former Prime Minister Raila Odinga, and every other leader will be uh, seated where their seats are. Like I said, the closer we get to the moment where they are expected here, uh, the tighter security gets. Earlier on, you could see lots of people pass by uh, this uh, dais or pass by the, uh, the, the VIP side of the dais. But right now, that is reducing. You can see uh, presidential escort security officers have already taken charge of this particular area. And uh, they're making sure only people allowed to access this particular zone are actually accessing this zone. Uh, but uh, the members of parliament that I have seen who have uh, yeah, arrived at this particular place, all the dignitaries that I have seen include former Migori governor, uh, Okoto Bado, who is here. I don't know if he can have a word with us in regards to uh, the passing on of the general. Uh, uh, Yes, uh, uh, there is also uh, the member of parliament, Mark Nyamita. There is the former Migori governor, Okoto Bado, uh, who we would love to have. Uh, thank you very much, Mwashimio. You are live on NTV. And uh, this is a sad moment, but also a celebration. A celebration of Kenya's hero. A man who has uh, dedicated 40 years of his 61 years to serving the country. Actually, he would be marking exactly 40 years by May. That is next month in the military. How do you remember General Ogola even as the country lays him to rest today? Well, thank you very much. Um, I had the rare privilege of uh, having visited General Ogola, actually in his rural home. Uh, one time, I think the president was in my constituency, but we flew in to his place and he hosted us for dinner at his place with his family. And so we got an opportunity then to interact uh, to great lengths because we were there for almost about five hours. I must say, a good man, a very organized man, a family man indeed. And, um, you know, he gave us a bit of uh, uh, hints of uh, how his life had been in the military and uh, a bit of how this village uh, perceived him initially and got to understand him as time uh, went by. But initially, people thought that he was someone who was so closed in. But later on, people just came to understand that, you know, he has time for everything because he was a very, very organized man. But I actually think that uh, the biggest thing that we celebrate is that uh, he rose through the ranks uh, on merit from the lowest level to the highest possible level. It is an unfortunate thing that he had to die uh, at this time when he just had one year and a few days to the celebration of his father's 100th uh, birthday. But uh, one of the things, I mean, listening to the family members speaking, that this gentleman was not only organized when he's in life, but he had actually completely prepared his family for his final uh, days. I actually think that uh, the circumstances under which he died are unfortunate though in the line of duty. And you know, when you join the military, you can either die uh, while at work or you can kill while you're at it. Unfortunately, you know, the top post had to die under such circumstances. And because, and because there are few questions that are people are seats, asking, are I think that uh, one of the things is that uh, we want to challenge the security agencies that they need to ensure
So I mean, this vehicle, the air, the, the vehicle that actually the helicopters that people use, uh, actually of the best standing, so that we don't lose such uh, uh, promising people, good people that we have had of this. Because even if he would have retired as of next year, I'm sure with the knowledge that he had, we would have still found a better place for him to do here. So as he goes to rest, mine is really to wish the family all the best, but to ask that maybe the country we stay calm and like we hope that the person who will fill in his shoes will continue with his legacy and ensure that he delivers the mandate yes thank you very much thank you very much mark nyamita member of parliament uh here speaking to us about how he remembers uh, the late general ogola announcements being made by state house secretary michael um, who is actually instructing that everybody gets to sit so from now I think we we may have to move to the other side but Roslyn uh, even about the VIPs well, I can see CS Zachary and Jeru uh, who has uh, already arrived that is the CS uh, water uh, uh, several other cabinet secretaries expected, but so far, uh, cabinet secretary for water, uh, Zakaria and Jeru. If uh, Dennis can actually show us, uh, so far, cabinet secretary for water, Zakaria and Jeru, is in uh, uh, the uh, or has arrived and has taken his place. Uh, members of parliament, uh, some of them we have well, we have so far spoken to two of them, and uh, uh, more we will be speaking to as they arrive. And uh, announcements being made by the Secretary of State's Functions, Michael Gitonga. Uh, I mentioned as Michael Njenga earlier, Michael Gitonga, uh, uh, that all police officers, all security officers need to come uh, and consult the Major General Paul Otieno uh, in terms of security arrangements. Uh, but then again, uh, remember, General Ogola will be laid to rest without a coffin. Uh, yes, that yeah. is also another first. Yeah. Uh, what 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 is explaining this? You know, being laid to rest without a coffin. Even as we move to this side, uh, so please bear with us because of the very many movements happening here. Yeah. Uh, once in a while, you'll see people blocking uh, the camera shots, but no worries. The work still continues. Rosalind, yeah. where did this tradition come from of being laid to rest without a coffin? Uh, you know, it's something that I think has puzzled the entire country because remember. It was announced that he was going to be buried without a coffin. Uh, there were so many people who thought that it was a Muslim uh, uh, tradition. But now we are being told that actually it is a Luo tradition. It used to happen in the past. And you saw, you had even uh, Ogola's son, Joel, yesterday saying that my father, even the wooden cassette to, uh, that he was put in, was just a, a, a normal normal coffin that they had picked that even the coast if you remember yes yes that he was talking about and he said even as he wore his uniform that he had donned because of the work he did his last last exercise he will just be wrapped uh, with a simple cloth that goes with what he had put in his will so i think this is also a reminder to the history that we had, because most of the time we always talk about the institutional memories of what happened in the past. Because I think the generation, yes, our generation, does not reconcile uh, with what is happening today. But I, I think after what happens today, then it will be part and parcel of us to actually retrace our roots and see why our people who are being buried the way General Ogola will be buried. Thank you. Thank you, Rosalind. And if you allow me, I think uh, uh, it's time uh, we showed you the shots uh, from the other side here at uh, the uh, Senator Obama Kogelo Primary School. You can see the Azimio leadership arriving here. I can see NAC Kenya party leader Martha Karua. Uh, I can as well see former Muranga governor Mwangiwairia and uh, yes, accompanying Martha Karua here for uh, the burial of uh, the General Francis Ogola. Some of the dignitaries, I don't know if I'll be able to uh, grab Martha Karua to have a word with us before she sits. Uh, I can see Member of Parliament on Boko Milemba. I don't know uh, if we will allow her to sit and perhaps uh, approve. You can see, and understandably so, uh, right now security and the protocols and the logistics of even moving around is becoming tighter because we are moving uh, 
we're inching closer to the minute where uh, the body is supposed to be here and President William Ruto is also supposed to be here. If, any, if everything had gone to plan, then the body should have been here by now, uh, five minutes ago. But there was that slight delay at the Kisumu International Airport, and that's why it's not here. And again, if everything had gone to plan, uh, we would be counting only 10 minutes before the Commander-in-Chief, President William Ruto, arrived here. But then again, there was that delay, and uh, this, the body is not here, that's the Commander-in-Chief is not here. But we are sure that the body is en route to this place, a 60-kilometer journey. But uh, uh, let me try and uh, talk to uh, Martha Karua. Rosalind, if you will allow me. Approach and uh, see if she can speak to us. They did a statement about the security of uh, our military officers, and uh, this is. Uh, Ma 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 this is NTV. We don't know if uh, you have a minute to just uh, say your final words to the general live on TV. Please, Martha Karua. Uh, come closer. Yes, uh, we are right now being joined by NAC Kenya party leader uh, on NTV. She has just arrived here at uh, the Senator Obama uh, Kogelo Primary School to pay her last respects to the Chief of the Defense Force, uh, General Gola. If you can look at the camera there, and uh, even as you did a statement two days ago about the safety of our, of our military equipment and our military officers, but you have actually come to pay your respects to a man who has dedicated 40 years of his life to serving the country, how would you best remember General Ogola? As a professional, as a patriot, who did the best for Kenya and for the military. It is very sad that we are laying him to rest today and that the very uh, people he secured failed. The country that he secured failed to secure his flight. Questions will linger and we hope that after this send-off, investigations will take place in earnest and give us the much-needed answers. We need to know where his designated chopper was and what is exactly happening in that area. Well, and, uh, and in your statement, even, even as you allow it to you to go sit, you asked about the safety of the equipment of our military officers, not just the, the general, but the entire uh, Kenya Defense Forces and everyone serving the country. Uh, perhaps you may want to give us the details of where that was coming from and what you hope we hope to achieve maybe in the next coming days. Very briefly, just to say, the military secures all the flights of their commander-in-chief. The second most important person whose security they mind is their own chief of defense forces, CDF. In this case, the CDF was let down. We need to know what is happening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Martha Karua, uh, a leader, Azimio Alaumoja, One Kenya Coalition, also the party leader, NAC Kenya, speaking about how uh, she remembers General Ogola and also raising questions about uh, the that particular crash and calling for investigations. This is in line to that statement that the Azimio coalition uh, issued earlier in the week, immediately actually after that particular accident where they called for investigations. Uh, more leaders are here, uh, but as you can see, uh, I don't know if we have those pictures on the screen from of the convoy, uh, our directors Jackie and Mike. Uh, the convoy left the... Uh, Kisumu International Airport uh, moments ago and uh, I think in the next 10 to 15 minutes it should be here at the uh, Jaramogi, uh, uh, rather, uh, forgive me, at the uh, Senator uh, Obama uh, Kogelo Primary uh, School. And uh, like I said, VIPs still arriving, more announcements being made uh, by the Secretary of State Functions, uh, Michael Gitonga, uh, just giving instructions and asking people to sit. So maybe in the next few minutes we may also uh, be requ uh, required to sit. But uh, arriving right now is Langata, Member of Parliament, uh, Felix Odiwor, uh, popularly known as uh, uh, popularly known as Jalango. If Dennis can show us, uh, 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 if Dennis can show us, uh, that is Langata, Member of Parliament, uh, Jalango.
who has just arrived with several other members of parliament. Uh, the members of parliament that I can see, I can see, I can see as well the Honorable James uh, Nikal, member of parliament, uh, Seme constituency from the neighboring Kisumu County, uh, and several other leaders. There is also uh, the uh, Honorable Elisha uh, from GEM, who is also here. Uh, all members of parliament are really taking their seats. Uh, uh, there is, so far, I can only spot one cabinet secretary, and that is uh, Zakari Anjeru, the cabinet secretary for water, who is uh, here already. Uh, again, I'm repeating about the dignitaries that are here, members of parliament, cabinet secretaries. Uh, and I keep repeating. Uh, because of those instructions and because the moment keeps drawing closer, then we may have to move in the next few minutes from where we are to a different location because uh, of obeying uh, the protocols, this is actually where the president sits and it's only a privilege that we uh, have had to be this close. And uh, even as uh, the moments draw closer, we shall be required to take steps backwards. So you will understand if at some point you'll have shaky shots. But remember, there are uh, what uh, pictures from Kisumu International Airport. Already the body or the convoy of the late Francis Ogola left Kisumu on its way here. Uh, it will be coming to the Senator Obama Kogelo Primary School. Uh, this is where the service will be happening and all the military activities before his body is finally taken uh, to his home. That is uh, some six kilometers from here where he will finally be laid to rest. We are told that at home they will only be allowing about 50 persons because of the space there. So not everyone will be allowed to get there. Uh, uh, not everyone will be allowed to get to that compound or the final uh, resting place where General Ogola will be laid to rest. Now, I have spoken uh, for quite some time. I need to uh, take some water <laughs> uh, because uh, even as we keep briefing you on everything uh, that is happening here, the live shots, uh, the live pictures that we have from the Kisumu International Airport, uh, our Zakius Mosame and his crew are there. Uh, following the convoy, updating us of each and every minute on where the convoy is. I am here with Rosaline Obala, who I want to hand over to for the next few minutes uh, to perhaps uh, also tell us more dignitaries who are here. Rosaline, perhaps you may want to use my microphone, uh, not yours. <laughs> Give us an update on uh, the more people who are still arriving. I can see uh, former even editors, Guild Chair, yeah, uh, yeah, Churchill, Lowe, yeah. Lowe, Lowe, Lowe is here. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Maybe you want to take away. Uh, uh, thank you, Ibrahim Karanja. Uh, just again to take you through what is happening here, we are actually at Senator Obama Primary School where we are going to have the final funeral service for the late general. And just as Ibrahim, my colleague, has said, many dignitaries who are walking in you can actually see only the VIP section is actually remaining vacant uh, the other places are actually full uh, as they wait for the leaders to come uh, we have seen the sitting uh, members of parliament from Siaya County uh, we have the CS for water Zachary Njeru we are also having the former leaders here and just uh, maybe just to brief our viewers that here at Senator Obama Primary School, the military has actually been playing some of the final footage of the general, the last assignment where the general was and what had happened. They have actually also indicated through the Google uh, map the movements that the, the general had in the three counties that he moved in. Uh, the last assignment, just as the commander-in-chief had indicated, that we actually lost the general during an active duty. So the, the pictures that we're actually seeing here are actually the, the last and some of the rememberable moments of the senator, uh, the, sorry, of the general as we come to his final close. Let me hand over. to the convoy, uh, which uh, is coming from the Kisumu International Airport, left the airport some minutes ago, uh, should be drawing closer here. And our Zakius Mosame, like I said, is uh, there. And Zakius, how far are you? And uh, from your estimation, in how long do we expect you here? Now, 
heading to Gombea. We are using the uh, Tisian Bondo Road to uh, the, ho the home of the elite General Friends of Gola. And as we speak now, we are at a shopping center called Pombewa, just past Obambo. We have uh, made a short stop here because of, I think, the issues to do with the protocol. Uh, some of the vehicles had blocked the vehicle carrying the uh, family of the elite General Friends of Gola, and uh, it has forced the military to stop the uh, for a bit to reorganize uh, the vehicles, and uh, that means we are sometimes being pushed further uh, to the back, but that is important for, for the family uh, of the late General Franz Ogola. Uh, Obambo uh, market is uh, actually uh, approximately 40, 34 minutes to uh, the home of the, the late uh, General Francis Ogola, and that means that in about 30 to 40 minutes, we then will be making our way, in, in, in case we don't make any other further stop, we'll be making our way to the home of, of the late uh, General Francis Ogola. Uh, like I mentioned earlier on, there was some breach of protocol and uh, they had to stop. We have stopped, uh, uh, we'll be resuming shortly, uh, the general will be resuming shortly, uh, because uh, actually it is important that we we do that. Uh, there's a push and pull here uh, for everyone trying to access the front row. Uh, in fact, uh, as we speak, uh, people are trying to access this. But uh, in about 40 or so minutes, we should be making way to his home, uh, to the Senator Obama primary where the event will be held uh, before maybe the rights are done. But as we speak now, we are at Kombewa. Kombewa market is along the Kisian Bondo Road. We opted to use this. I think uh, they saw it better to use this road because it's a bit shorter as compared to the Kisumu Luanda Stiaia Road. That could have also led to the home of General Franz Ogola. We have residents here forcing the entrance to stop. They are demanding to uh, be given an opportunity maybe to just say a bye-bye. Uh, but as you understand, it's not uh, the pleasure of the military to allow such things or maybe to cut short their protocols. Uh, we have residents who are al aligned along the roads in large numbers for that matter. The residents have lined along the roads in large numbers. Some are recording using their phones. Others are just using their eyes to see uh, this. Energy. And uh, we also have to mention that it has a huge, huge convoy. This is a huge convoy of people of importance that matter to the family and to General Francis Ogola, both with the media also accompanying him. And uh, uh, this is going to be something that people live to remember, especially uh, at this time of the year. Also, to note is that uh, the distance I mentioned earlier is around 40 minutes, and we have now resumed. We are moving towards Bondo. Uh, we'll be keeping you updated with the progress. But we are using the Christian, for those who understand this route, route is that we are using the Christian, the Christian uh, Kombewa Bondo route. Uh, later on, we'll be now taking a right turn to near where this special event is going to take place. Well, uh, Pastor Kombea, we have now just left the Kombea market. Our next big market will be Bondo. Uh, Bondo market, uh, Bondo is uh, uh, where, you know, we understand that Bondo is where the uh, former Prime Minister Ailo Odinga comes from. And uh, we also expect we have witnessed a huge, a huge crowds al lining along the roads to uh, just to give the last respect by way of waving 
uh, to the late General Francis Ogola. Now we are heading to Pondo. Uh, uh, this is a bit, uh, is a bit uh, not busy road. Uh, of course, the police have made sure that they have stopped the, all the oncoming cars because we are using all the two lanes uh, as we head home to General Francis Ogola. This is a bit uh, uh, organized. Uh, the police have not taken chances because it could have been chaotic if uh, the oncoming vehicles could have been allowed to come. I think they have stopped for some time to just allow this convoy make its way to Senator Obama primary uh, before maybe they allow the other vehicles. Because usually this is usually a busy road. The Bondo, Peace and Kisumu Road is usually a busy road. And uh, by allowing uh, or by blocking the vehicles that are oncoming vehicles, it has made it easy for uh, this convoy to quickly make its way to Senator Obama primary, where the burial ceremony will be held. It's important to note that uh, the residents of this region have come out in large numbers. We are still seeing them. Every small shopping center, they are lined up in large numbers. Yes, a small shopping center, but is actually uh, characterized with huge crowds already lining up to uh, wave to, uh, to this convoy. We need to also uh, say that it's important to note that later on, I think past the Bondo, we will be making a right turn. We are remaining with now around 30, uh, 38 or so minutes to the home uh, because it's around three minutes since we resumed the convoy movement. And uh, therefore, others are using, uh, ordinarily people are using uh, leaves, eh? they have uh, taken leaves. This is a sign of believing. They are using leaves to show that they are actually together with the family of the late Francis Ogola in this tragic uh, event that uh, got in the family on Thursday in that uh, crash that happened in El Gero Marquez. And therefore, like we mentioned, uh, nothing has been left to chance. The security and the, 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 the traffic movement has been taken care of by way of blocking the Kisian, uh, uh, Kisian Bondo Road. The oncoming vehicles have been asked to just, uh, like, way of respect, also pave way for this convoy because uh, it will have been chaotic if something of the sort will have not been taken because this is usually a busy road. Along the road, and, uh, and in an, or something that's not ordinary. Now, these regions, even where now there are no market people, are lined up. They're shouting, they're undulating, uh, they're screaming, they're, you know, doing all sorts of communication in a manner of joining the family of late, the late Francis Ogola in mourning uh, this great hero uh, that uh, left uh, the family and the country at large in an unexpected manner. Uh, we also need to know that past Bondo, uh, Bondo is a huge market. I don't know if they'll make, but they say that there will be no stopovers whatsoever. So we are just making the way. The only an exceptional stopover that was made at uh, uh, Kombewa market was to reorganize the convoy because uh, it uh, was evident that the vehicle carrying the family of the late was actually blocked by other citizen vehicles and uh, therefore forcing the military to stop the convoy uh, and uh, come to rearrange. Uh, sometimes the traditions have not been followed because, of course, uh, sometimes people usually say that uh, when a convoy carrying a body is uh, heading home, we don't need to stop. And that is from the other side in law. And the Afghans are going to do this thing in a military, uh, uh, using military protocols also. Every other thing will be kept at bay to give way for the last respect. We are still witnessing large crowds. I tell you, large crowds along this road, the, a large crowds along the Kisian Pondo Road uh, of people, residents who have left their shows to just make sure that they give last respect uh, to the late General Francis Ogola. Uh, way. We are also, we have been joined by now for the border riders who are now uh, gathering slowly 
also joining the entry, that joining the convoy as a manner of also showing their last respect. And you know, the border border guys have some other manners, some some funny way of mourning by uh, flouting traffic rules. And uh, like I said, they are just hitting each other on the other side. They have a way of uh, some uh, unusual way of mourning these border border people. And uh, I think they need to style up because they otherwise miss uh, this convoy. So, uh, uh, 2020. So we are trying to make way. These are these people are becoming chaotic, and uh, sometimes I don't know what's happening. Uh, 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 we also need to get the access, but it's also we need to be very careful because it might end up again. Uh, 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 we need to move. All right, thank you. We are trying. To, we are trying to make a way to our original position because we have people who are actually moving very fast, and therefore. Those crowds, like I mentioned earlier, are still uh, lining up along, lining up along this road, oncoming vehicles parking alongside the road to give way to uh, this convoy. We are nearing Bondo. Uh, we are nearing Bondo. Remember, we are from the Kisumu Airport. We are using the Christian Bondo Road uh, to uh, uh, to head to the home of the late General Francis Okola. Uh, we are still at the uh, Senator Obama Kogelo Primary School. The situation is that President William Ruto, the Commander-in-Chief, has since arrived at uh, the venue and he has since he uh, went he uh, headed to the holding area. He is the Commander-in-Chief. He is the one leading this particular ceremony in laying to rest General Francis Ogola, the Chief of the Defense Forces. But uh, more dignitaries have arrived in the time, uh, even as we wait for the convoy that uh, brings the body of the uh, uh, General. I have seen a couple of cabinet secretaries who are here, and I will uh, request to speak to some of them. There is Cabinet Secretary Moses Kuria of uh, Public Service. Uh, there is Cabinet Secretary Florence Bo Yes, Kuria, please, a minute. If you can have a word with us, uh, please. In order, yes, please, come. Uh, uh, of course, I am now speaking to, uh, without interfering with the protocol, CS Kuria.
How you remember General Ogola, you are live on NTV. This is a function where the country is paying its tribute to a man who dedicated 40 years of his 61 years to service. How do you best remember uh, General Ogola? Ogola is a very humble man. And a man of such high position with such humility, it's really a big lesson, a uh, team worker. Well, we worked very well on many assignments, and I must say it's a big loss for this country. A big loss for this country, and there are very many lessons uh, that the country is drawing, even from, his, uh, even from his death, you know, from his own wish to be buried 72 hours uh, upon death, to how simple he wanted this activity to happen. Perhaps, what what do you make out of the person that he was? Even listening to some to the addresses that were being made yesterday, even President William Bruto speaking about the incident in which General Ogola said, "Mr. President, you have three options: uh, send me to court martial, retire me, or most importantly, forgive me." For a military general, what does that does this describe of this person? Well, I think uh, this coming in a country where. Everybody is stuck up with their positions, with their titles, Bonham Kubas and that kind of thing. It's really a lesson that about mortality of all of us. The second thing is really about uh, preparation of our families. You know, uh, life is, is, is finite, as the general said. It has a start point and an end point. And if we do love our families, uh, the least we can do is to prepare them. You've seen the general's family, uh, the Joel and the mother, are very strong and they're actually much stronger than the rest of us. And the third thing really is, um, even for the situation that the president was describing, is a call for us to end the politics of division, the politics of thinking, you know, we are one country and we need each other. At the end of the day, all of us, you know, will go the same journey. And so there is absolutely no reason for us to ever get back to the situation that, uh, that, that, uh, that occurred, you know, under the circumstances that the president and general described. Because what is all the big deal? We all die. So what, what is there to actually fight for so much. So I think that's a call for unity and a call to, to really uh, lessen uh, the political tensions in this country. Thank you very much. Moses Kuria, the Cabinet Secretary, Public Service, saying that this is a lesson uh, for the entire country on how you remember uh, General Ogola. Uh, please, you briefly remember General Ogola uh, having been in a cabinet and at a time when he served as the chief of the defense. Um, thank you very much. I want to say we have lost a great very humble person. I'm happy to have met him and uh, we are going to lose his services to this country and uh, want to wish the family uh, strength and peace and comfort during this time of his loss. We have lost a great leader. We have lost a great Thank you for CS Bore. Uh, this ad I request Kari uh, Anzeru. Uh, thank you very much. You are live on NTV. Uh, I'm taking the views of cabinet secretaries on how they best remember uh, General Ogola at a time when you sit in the cabinet, at a time when he was the chief of the defense force. Uh, perhaps interactions with him, what stands out? Um, means I had met him at the Hope's office, the head of public service commission. We had us one who was equal to the responsibility that he had been given by His Excellency the President. He was focused, and to us as a country, we really lost a patriot, a patriot who was really ready to transform the entire fraternity and all people from this region where he had come from. Thank you. Thank you very much, Waziri, and thank you for your time. Well, C.S. Zakaria and Jeru, C.S. Water, before, her, before him, I spoke to C.S. Florence Bore, uh, Labour, as well as C.S. Moses Kuria, uh, Public Service, uh, C.S., and more cabinet secretaries are arriving, members of parliament, governors. Uh, like I said, the commander-in-chief, President William Ruto, is already within this vicinity, and uh, the picture said that the seats uh, that were meant for non-dignitaries were all occupied. But right now, 
even the seats for the dignitaries are getting full filled by the minute uh, because with every arrival of a VIP, then another seat gets occupied and it's only a matter of time before all the uh, designated seats uh, are occupied. Right now, uh, more on the screens, I don't know if my directors, Mike and Jackie, are able to show us uh, the, uh, the shots on the screen. And this is the General Gola's last moment. But even as uh, you get to General Gola's last moment, I want to hand over to Zakius Mosame, who is uh, coming from, uh, uh, or coming with a convoy, uh, which should be arriving at this place at any moment. So Mosame, uh, take it away. Those are members of the clergy who will be leading us in today's ceremony. Shortly, shortly, we expect uh, the chief guest, and we will be beginning today's. Uh we are on the still on the uh, Christian Bond Road, but uh, we are not going to use the Bond Town because we are going to use the Ndori Junction to Kogelo. Uh, but the, it's important to note that uh, this convoy uh, will first of all start by visiting the church that uh, General Francis Bogola built in the village, St. Stephen's SK, uh, where uh, he, together with the other well wishers, built, and therefore it's important that his body is going to uh, uh, be uh, put there for a few minutes. Then it will make way to his father's home. Remember, his father celebrated 100 years yesterday, uh, his 100th birthday yesterday. So it's important he's still alive, and uh, the body is going to go to his father's home. And then finally, will make its way to uh, uh, Senator Obama Primary, where the burial ceremony will be held. And uh, therefore, it's important to note that we are now almost uh, ten minutes, five or so minutes to the junction to Ndori, Ndori Junction. Uh, from Ndori Junction, is uh, again another five minutes to uh, St. Stephen's uh, Church that uh, General Ogola built. And therefore, roughly, we have around uh, less than 15 minutes to the venue in here. Uh, it's important to know in terms of time so that we can be able to understand how long this journey is going to go and attack. We are still on Bondo Kissian Road, like I mentioned, but we are using, we are just now indicating we have approached the Ndori, uh, we are approaching the Ndori Junction. Uh, Ndori is still on the uh, Kissian Bondo Road. Uh, it's around four or five minutes uh, drive. Uh, once we are there, then we will also use around around five or six minutes to uh, Kogelo. Uh, Kogelo is the area that this uh, particular need is going to happen. Uh, and uh, we are still witnessing huge crowds of people lining along the road, some trying to block the convoy uh, to uh, no avail, they are trying to block the convoy uh, so that they could maybe get a glimpse of uh, uh, that body, but that is not uh, the program for today. Uh, the convoy and the organizers are just determined to make sure that General Francis Ogola's remains of body is actually finally 
at his rural home. Uh, uh, like I mentioned, uh, he, together with other way which has built a church, and therefore it will not be direct to, uh, the body will not directly be taken to Senator Obama primary. From here, uh, it will first of all make a stop at the church that he built for close to 10 or so minutes. And then uh, the body will also be taken to his father's home, still at Nia. Uh, for some so, 10 or so minutes, uh, then before it will be taken to Senator Obama primary, uh, where the funeral ceremony uh, will be uh, held. And uh, therefore, that is important uh, to note because uh, it is part of this very important day, the day to the family and the Kenyans. Uh, it is also equally it's important to understand uh, that uh, uh, everything, every pro military protocol has been put into consideration, including uh, uh, transporting the military police are the one leading the convoy. We have three motorbikes, uh, three military motorbikes leading this convoy from the front, of course, followed uh, uh, by two uh, heavily uh, armed, uh, two, uh, two vehicles with the heavily armed uh, officers also, and then the heart that is carrying a Mercedes-Benz heart is actually in the middle. Uh, of course, the family and the other high-ranking military officers using an, a bus uh, falling closely. We have other officers than the media has also uh, been given a space at a distance, fifth of six in the terms of the convoy. We are still witnessing people along the road who are giving the last respect. This was important. Uh, the organizers saw that it was important to use the road uh, to transport the body to the village so that people of the region could get an ample opportunity to say a final goodbye uh, for the late general Francis Ogola. We are now nearing the Ndori Junction. I can see from a distance, and uh, once we are there, we'll make a right turn to Kogalo. Uh, in Kogalo there, I, like I mentioned, we will make a stop at the church that the General Francis Ogola built uh, before going to his father's home, who fortunately turned 100 years, he celebrated his 100th birthday yesterday. The father to General Franz Zogola is actually 100 years, and he's waiting to receive the body at his home. I don't know if it's following the tradition, but we'll be able to learn that later. But we have been informed that this convoy from the church, it will be heading to the father's home, and then later on, uh, to Senator Obama primary, where the funeral ceremony, burial ceremony will be held uh, before our final send-off of the late General Francis Ogola. Uh, it has been uh, a distance. The speed was reduced. Actually, uh, we came from the airport. At a, we are doing at around 60 kilometers per hour, 50 to 60 kilometers per hour, it has been reduced to around 40 because we had an incident, one of the military vehicles hit uh, the, poli the, uh, uh, the motorbikes and uh, it uh, brought a lot of commotion, a bit of commotion, but it was sorted, it was realized that it did not cause a lot of damage to the motorbike, it was allowed to continue informing the reduction of the speed and that's why we are uh, taking a bit of time and actually on the road, uh, because it brought some two incidences there. First of all, the motorbike people hit each other, border border riders, but the second one, the military uh, 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 military car hit a uh, military motorbike, uh, informing the reduction of the speed. And actually, that's why we are still on the bondo the Kitsian Bondo Road, we have not taken a turn at the Ndori Junction. Because from Ndori Junction, we will be heading to Kogalo, uh, where all these other events will be taking place, including, like I rightfully mentioned earlier on, uh, visiting the church uh, that uh, Senator 
uh, uh, the charge that General Ogola uh, actually helped uh, Hanzi in building, building uh, together with the other well-wishers. Uh, to, uh, then he will be visiting his father, who turned 100 years yesterday, uh, then later on going to Senator Obama primary for the burial uh, ceremony, and actually uh, the funeral will be taking place later on. People are still lining up on the road, uh, the, those using uh, leaves, waving in the air, those taking pictures, road shouting, those pulling uh residents here are using all manner of expressions to uh, present their uh, commiserations towards uh, this uh, unfortunate incident. And the last respect to the late General Francis Ogola, we have the young, uh, the middle-aged, the old, all lining up along in twos, in threes, in pairs, in groups along this road to just make sure uh, that uh, they uh, give their final send-off. We have also witnessed even some, they look, uh, they look religiously uh, determined to also place this convoy. They are lifting their hands and uh, making, pronouncing some prayers towards this. I've seen some uh, along the road, uh, they are dressed religiously, I believe. Uh, they are also praying for the convoy uh, to make sure that General Gola's body arrives home safely uh, without any hitch. And uh, so far, so good. Uh, apart from those small minor accidents of hitting each other, uh, the convoy is work making way. You can still hear, listen to those holy uh the cries from ladies lining along this Christian Bond Road where we are still uh, making way to no rejection. We is even, yes, like I said, the religious ladies on the left, in huge number, large numbers there, uh, making some pronouncements. I believe they are making prayers for the convoy and the what have you. Uh, once the body arrives at uh, yeah, it will first of all make a stop at the church that the General Gola built. Uh, of course, from there, for a period of around 10 minutes, it will then uh, proceed to his father's home uh, for an, another 10 minutes. I don't know if members of the public will be allowed to view the body. That is not uh, part of the plan. We have not been informed, but if it will happen, then we will inform you because of our strong team that is already on the ground, we'll be doing that. But uh, from there then, after leaving the father's home, the body will be taken to Senator Obama Primary School where all other guests are currently waiting for the burial ceremony that will be conducted by the church. Uh, and uh, the help of the uh, clergy from the military uh, also will be there to give guidance and help to just make sure that the final send off of the General Francis Ogola moves smoothly, ends smoothly, and ends as planned. We are already safe because, actually, according to the program that was given, uh, the body was already supposed to be at home, uh, the body was supposed to actually uh, arrive, at, arrive uh, at around 9.30, uh, eight minutes late, but no worry, because they are trying to make it, we understand uh, that it was terminated by a delay at the airport, to be sure that uh, they will be making it. The weather is still gloomy here. We have seen the clouds uh, still gathering. They are determined to gather. I don't know how long this will go, uh, but it might actually affect uh, the entire program because uh, rain might interfere uh, here uh, with the, uh, the, uh, the ceremony. But not, that notwithstanding, is not a major concern because either way this has to happen, it will be because of the weather, uh, it has to happen when it has been planned and it has to happen. Uh, we will also be moving slowly because the, 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 the speed has been uh, increased a bit. Uh, been again, the speed has been increased 
just uh, with the concern of the time, because we are still already behind the time. Uh, that program was given is already behind the time by almost 50 million, and they have to make a way of recovering that. We have uh, that happening. Uh, we think the, the Kitchen Bono Road uh, is a one-way road, and uh, they have been forced to block the road's oncoming uh, road uh, from this other side, and therefore this convoy is using both lanes towards Bondo to just make this easy for everyone. Uh, it is also important to note that uh, along the road, uh, the police officers are lined up to just make sure that they control the movement of traffic. Maybe those who intend to join the road abruptly to avoid any incident at this particular time. We have seen them lining along uh, to help in coordinating and controlling uh, any eventuality that will be uh, maybe come in this way. We have now, uh, we are still in Kisumu, we have entered their uh, county because that there's a big board that shows uh, it uh, shows the boundary of Kisumu and Sierra County there. We are now at Akala Market. It is the first market on this road. Uh, uh, for those who have used the Kisian Bond Road, Akala, uh, we are at Akala Market. I can now see the crowds uh, building big here. At this market, I can tell you, this is a huge crowd. We have not seen this before. Uh, people have stand up in the number, I can tell you. Uh, this is a bit huge. Yes, people have people previously turned up on the previous market, but this is exemplary big. Uh, people have turned up actually in big numbers, lined up along the road, and they are demanding that uh, the control measures stop, but that will not be possible. In the interest of time, and in the interest of the already given programs, there was no stop over here, and therefore it will not happen. Yes, it will not happen. They have tried to stop, uh, uh, but uh, the leader that had demanded that no, we have to uh, make our way to near. And therefore, yes, off we go. Off we go. We leave a color market. Off we go. Uh, off we go to the next stopover. And therefore, that, but that was a huge crowd, I can tell you. Uh, people have really turned up here at Akala Market to also beat their uh, to General Francis of Gola. The numbers are still huge. The numbers are still big. Yes, women. You can see that. Uh, they are relating, they are shouting, they are crying, all, all manner of expressions to show uh, their commiserations and uh, just enjoying the family. Yes. Uh, from here, I think we now will be heading to that junction of Dori. Uh, there are sort of changes here and there uh, because uh, the people who are making the decisions are actually ahead of us and we are following keenly to just make sure that we bring you up to speed with what happens here on the convoy, uh, but uh, in uh, about maybe 15 again or so minutes, we will be making our way uh, to near junction. The speed is actually moderate uh, because I mentioned earlier on, we started off the, at a supersonic speed from Kisumu International Airport. There were some two incidents that maybe informed the reduction of the seed, and uh, we are now at uh, a place called Malele. Uh, Malele is still on the Kisian Bondo Road. Uh, we will be uh, giving you updates as to when what happened, but for now, I would like to take the chance to take back to my colleagues here there in Mia for more updates. My name is Zakis Masame.
here in Siaya, along with the Christian Bonorod, uh, with the convoy of the late General Francis Ocona. Back to you then. Maswala ujasusi nchini Bwana Nurdin Haji ambaye ameshawasili kupata kuwa nasi yuko pia pamoja nasi Luteni General Mstafu Cherio ambaye aliweza kuhudumu kama kamanda wa jeshi letu la nchi kavu pia ningependa kuchukua fursa hii kuwatambua waheshimiwa wa bunge wanaohusika na kamati ya bunge katika bunge la kitaifa kamati ya bunge inayohusika na masuala ya ulinzi ujasusi pamoja na masuala ya nchi za kigeni wakiongozwa na mwenyekiti wao mheshimiwa Nelson Koech mbunge wa Belgut basi tutazidi kurudi studio upande ule wa pili gwaride likiweza kujitayarisha kuashiria kwamba wakati wowote tokea sasa tutakuwa tunapokea mwili wa General Francis Omondi Ogola kisha baadaye misa iweze kungoa nanga rasmi nakumbushwa na mwelekezi wangu kwamba tutaweza kuwa na ibada ama ukipenda service wakati tutaweza kuanza service yetu tunaomba tuweze kuwa tulivu ili misa yetu iweze kuendeshwa kwa njia isiyo kuwa na bugda na baada ya hapo alivyokuwa amesema mwenzangu bwana Mike Gitonga tafadhali kule nyumbani kwa jenerali nafasi ni finyu na iwapo haujapewa itifaki ya kuelekea mahali pale tafadhali tutakuwa mbashara uweze kufuatilia matukio yote mahali hapa Thank you to Rudy Studio to Palali. basi ningependa pia kuchukua fursa hii kutambua gavana wa jimbo la Busia mheshimiwa daktari Paul Nyongesa Otuoma ambaye ameshawasili yuko pia pamoja nasi aliyekuwa gavana Okoth Obado ambaye ameshawasili kupata kuwa nasi na muona katibu Susan Mangeni mheshimiwa Susan Mangeni ameweza kuwasili uh, hali kadhalika mbunge wa Langata mahali tuliweza kuwa hapo jana mheshimiwa Jalango kule Langata mahali tuliweza kuwa ulinzi sports complex iko katika eneo bunge lake karibu sana mheshimiwa kuweza kujiunga nasi katika ibada ya mwenda zake generali francis omondi ogola kwa asili kwake kamanda wa jeshi letu la nchi kavu luteni generali david kipkemboi tarus 
hali kadhalika ningependa kutambua kuwasili kwake kamanda wa jeshi letu la wanaanga meja jenerali John Mgaravai Omenda kamanda wa jeshi letu la wanamaji meja jenerali Thomas Nganga akiwa pamoja na kamanda wa jeshi letu la wanaanga meja jenerali John Omenda pamoja na meja jenerali Ben Waliaula Ningependa pia kutambua kuwasili kwake Inspector Generali wa Polisi Bwana Jafet Kome ambaye ameshawasili kupata kuwa nasi katika maombolezo haya ama ukipenda maziko ya Generali Francis Omondi Ogola. Tutazidi kuwakaribisha na kuzidi kuomba tuweze kuwa na subira Mwenyezi Mungu mwenye kunemesha neema zote aweze kutunemeshea haya kwa sababu yeye ndiye hupeana na yeye ndiye huchukua tutarudi studio tuweze kupata nyimbo za kuzidi kuomboleza na hali kadhalika kumtukuza Mwenyezi Mungu On the fateful day, Chief of the Defense Forces, General Francis Omondi Ogola, started his day from Moulton Airport, where he boarded a helicopter and flew to Chelsea Tech Primary School in Baringo County, where he and his military entourage inspected renovation works at the institution done by the Kenya Defense Forces troops. He later went to Kainuk Fuad Operating Base in Turkana County, where he addressed troops before proceeding to Cap Tuilel Secondary School for the launch of renovation works of five schools. Okay. So, Nishike, Ivi. Alafu, Ivi. Alafu. It was on his way from the Cap to Eleven Secondary School to the Recruits Training School in Eldoret, Wasengishu County, that a tragic accident occurred. These are the future leaders, the future doctors, the future engineers.
These are potential generals. But would you want to spoil the potential of these young men by telling them to go and steal cattle? We want to thank you for your patience. We'll be starting very shortly. And maybe just to give you a guide on the order of the service, we'll receive His Excellency, the President, together with the Deputy President, the First Lady, will be in shortly. They're already within the, the compound, but they'll be in shortly, followed by the late General. And once the late General is in position, we'll all be standing start off with the national anthem, after which we are going to hand over to the church to give us the opening prayer, followed by welcoming remarks. Then we go to the tributes. After the tributes, we'll then proceed to have the sermon, a prayer for the family before we finish. We don't expect it to be a very long service, but we really want to thank you for your patience. So shortly, we're going to be receiving His Excellency the President, together with the First Lady, the Deputy President, the Executive, followed by the Fallen General's body to be wheeled in, where we'll start with the National Anthem, followed by a prayer. Then we'll have some welcoming remarks from the church before we go to the tributes. After the tributes, We'll then have the sermon, wind up with a vote of thanks after a prayer for the family before we exit. A quick reminder, only those who have been briefed to go to the graveside will proceed to the graveside. There is very, very restricted space. It's also the wish of the family and would like to honor and respect that wish. So if you have not received a brief, to go to the graveside, we kindly request as we exit, you remain in the tent where you will watch the proceedings from the screens provided. So please, let's honor the family's request that only those briefed will proceed to the graveside. If you have not received a brief, kindly, we request that you remain here in the tent so that you'll watch the proceedings. We're about to begin, so we'll be starting shortly. Studio.
Yes, now we are making way to the uh, the church. Uh, we are making the way to the church. All right. Right now, we are making to where this is Obama Foundation and the father to the ladies here. So, uh, it's going to view the body first, like we mentioned yesterday, they stand 100 years. It will be important. They are just protocol, just, uh, just so if we can make way. So, we are going to witness this. Um, they is going to view the body of his son before it uh, proceeds to the other part. Uh, this is area. This is uh, actually a place called the Obama Foundation. Uh, so in CI here, uh, there is where the father, to the late uh, General Francis Ogola, is, and uh, we do expect that he's going to be given an opportunity to. Uh, uh, to view the body, and uh, you have to remember that these uh, they are following military protocols. Sometimes it's not even easy to access, but we have been fortunate enough to get to this stuff. Uh, like just a uh, thing I can show you there, we uh, have the house, the Mercedes make house that is making its way to this other part of the Obama Foundation, where the father to the late General Francis Ogola is uh is and uh, we have not seen uh one inch here uh meaning that uh, residents not maybe get an opportunity to uh view the body from this place uh and uh, that uh, is many just typically for the father therefore uh, it's important to note that all right hey. All right. We are moving that way. Yes, Songa, 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 Songa. All right. That's that. All right, so those are live pictures. Uh, we are making way to, I don't know, yes, we are preparing to get the casket out. Uh, some discussion, a bit of discussions there of what should be done. Uh, Yeah, so they want to, I think, change the body. We have been told to vacate. We are going to oblige with that, and therefore we are going to oblige with that. Uh, so we will, uh, sorry, sorry. We'll cut the broadcast for some time and uh, allow them to uh, All right. Samora Mora Makir Brodon Jokai Wabro Chako called National Anthem.
Fateful day, Chief of the Defense Forces, General Francis Omondi Ogola, started his day from Wilson Airport, where he boarded a helicopter and flew to Chesitet Primary School in Baringo County, where he and his military entourage inspected renovation works at the institution done by the Kenya Defense Forces troops. He later went to Kainuk Fuad Operating Base in Turkana County, where he addressed troops before proceeding to Cap Tuilel Secondary School for the launch of renovation works of five schools. Okay. So, Nishike, Ivi. Lapu, Ivi. Lapu. Secondary School to the Recruits Training School in Eldoret, Wasengishu County, that the tragic accident occurred. Basi kuzidi tu kwa kumbusha ni kwamba wakati mweshmiyo rice tawaiza kujiunga nasi rasmi tutaweza sote kusimama kwa eshma kwa ajili ya wimbo wa taifa na wimbo wa jumuiya Afrika Mashariki na tutaweza kuomba kwa wale ambao watakuwa wamevalia kofia za chepeo kofia zisizo rasmi kuweza kuzivua kwa ajili ya kipindi hiki shukran
basi nichukue fursa hii kuweza kutambua wabunge pamoja na waheshimiwa maseneta ambao wameweza kufika mheshimiwa Christine Ombaya mheshimiwa Silvana Sosoro mheshimiwa Atandi mheshimiwa Esther Pasaris mheshimiwa Ochanda mheshimiwa Obara mheshimiwa Jalango mheshimiwa daktari James Nyekal mheshimiwa Koyo seneta Aaron Cheriot akiwa yeye ndio kiongozi wa walio wengi katika seneti seneta Tom Ojenda miongoni mwa waheshimiwa wa bunge na waheshimiwa wa maseneta ambao wameshawasili kuomboleza nasi siku ya leo tutarudi studio tuweze kuendelea na burudani la chini kwa chini tukizidi kumshukuru Mwenyezi Mungu kwa maisha ambayo aliweza kumpa jenerali studio tunaomba wimbo ni nasiri naye Yesu basi ningependa kutambua kuwasili kwake aliyekuwa mkuu wa majeshi ya ulinzi jenerali Robert Kibochi akiwa ameandamana na mkewe ningependa pia kutambua kuwasili kwake aliyekuwa makamu wa rais wa taifa la Kenya Mheshimiwa Steven Kalonzo Musyoka ambaye ameshawasili kwa takuwa nasi. Basi studio tuweze kupata wimbo ni nasiri naye Yesu kunifanya jasiri. Wow, my name 
Kutambua aliyekuwa waziri wetu wa ulinzi Mheshimiwa Rachel Omamo ambaye ameweza kufika kupata kuwa nasi hali kadhalika waziri wetu wa masuala ya uchukuzi Mheshimiwa Onesmus Kipchumba Mrukomen ambaye ameshawasili kupata kuwa nasi waziri wetu wa kawi Mheshimiwa Samahani Mheshimiwa Davis Churchill ambaye ameshawasili kupata kuwa nasi kwa ajili ya hafla hii muhimu ya kuomboleza nasi na hatimaye kuweza kuwa nasi katika maziko ya Generali Francis Omondi Ogola ni nasiri na Yesu atazidi kutufanya kuwa jasiri
kwao luteni jenerali Jimson Mtai akiwa ameandamana na luteni jenerali Juma She Mnyikai pamoja na meja jenerali Burji kuweza kuomboleza nasi eh, hali kadhalika katibu wa wizara ya ulinzi mheshimiwa Patrick Mariru ambaye ameshawasili kupata kuwa nasi na muona pia waziri wetu wa ICT mheshimiwa Eliud Owalo ambaye ameshafika kupata kuwa nasi. Thank you. Tuendelee Mwenyezi Mungu azidi kutufanya kuwa wajasiri. studio kidogo ningependa kutambua kuwasili kwake speaker wa bunge la kitaifa mheshimiwa Moses Masika Wetangula akiwa ameandamana na mkuu wa mawaziri mheshimiwa Msali Amdavadi pamoja na viongozi wa mabunge yote mawili kiongozi wa walio wengi katika bunge la kitaifa mheshimiwa Anthony Kimani Chungwa pamoja na seneta wa Kericho mheshimiwa Aaron Cheriot yeye akiwa ni kiongozi wa walio wengi katika seneti la taifa la Kenya nina siri na Yesu studio shikilia studio tafadhali shikilia kidogo tuweze kupata sauti kutoka upande ule wa pili msafara huu ukija kwa utaratibu kabisa ukiongozwa na bendi za majeshi ya ulinzi ya Kenya
wimbo ni wakati wa kuomba will soon be beginning, so kindly. I see people at the back who are still standing. Please, let's take our seats. We recognize all mourners present. Please, let's take our seats. And just to guide you on the order of the service, we'll start off with His Excellency, the President, joining us in this service. Then we shall receive the body of General Ogola, and once placed in the rightful position, we'll then have the national anthem before we have an opening prayer and a welcome note from the service leaders, those who are going to be leading us in the service this morning. After that, we'll go to the tributes followed by the sermon, after which we'll conclude with a vote of thanks before proceeding to the graveside. As mentioned earlier, only those briefed will be allowed to access the gravesite because of the restrictive nature of where it is and the space. So if you have not received a brief to be at the gravesite, we kindly request that we cooperate to view the proceedings from the monitors provided. We'll soon be beginning our service, and we take this opportunity to thank you for your patience. Studio. Or maybe let's wait for the proceedings outside studio. Let's just remain mute as we now are getting ready to begin the procession. Thank you. As we continue to wait for the beginning of uh, the procession, we want to take this opportunity to specially recognize our friends who've come to help us mourn our fallen CBF, and I take make special recognition of the Chief of Defense Forces from Tanzania, the Chief of Defense Forces from Malawi, the Chief of Defense Forces from Burundi, the Air Force Commander from Uganda and his delegation who are also representing the Chief of Defense Forces, the Army Chief of Staff from Rwanda, representing the Chief of Defense Forces from Rwanda. We also have DAs, or members of the Military Diplomatic Corps. We have DAs from the United States, DA from UK, DA from China, the DA from Zambia, the DA from Rwanda, 
the DA from Malawi, and also the DA from Uganda, all joining us in this occasion. We are beginning the celebrations today. Silence, please. Let us all now rise as we receive His Excellency, the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces, Dr. William Samoy Ruto. We may take our seats briefly. With honor, humility, and respect, I kindly request that we be upstanding as we now receive the late General Okola.
we shall remain standing for the national anthem the national While standing, allow me to now welcome Canon Reverend Lele to lead us in an opening prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we want to acknowledge your greatness and that you are mighty in every situation. We pray, Heavenly Father, thanking you that in all circumstances, glory and honor comes back to you. We even want to commit this service before your hands, that dear Lord, from the onset right to the end, just as it was the wish of your servant General Gola, that his life may bring glory to you. May this service therefore be acceptable before you, O oh Lord. For it is in Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. Kindly request that we take our seats as we now welcome Bishop to give us the welcoming remarks. Welcome, sir. Good. Um, I greet you all in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Also with you. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, we are gathered here today and at this moment to lay to rest our departed brother in Christ, General. Francis Somondiogola, whom the Lord has called to rest with him. We as believers believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, and those who believe in him, when they rest, they will also rise, and Christ will give them new life. So as we come, we want to welcome you all to this Anglican Diocese of Maseno West, where the departed general was one of us in one of our churches, St. Thomas A.C.K. Nduru. Welcome, even as you join us, to lay to rest this departed brother in Christ, a man whom the Lord used in various ways to touch the lives of very many of us in this church. And how I pray that as we go through this service, the Lord will be with you. Find hope, find courage, find strength in the Lord. To the family of our departed brother, we do convey our condolences as a diocese to you and assure you of our prayers always and support where need be. So the Lord bless us as we go through this service. 
In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Back to the MC, even as we proceed in this service. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your Excellency the President, Your Excellency the First Lady, Your Excellency the Deputy President, the Prime Cabinet Secretary, the Speaker of the National Assembly, Mama Eileen and family, the VCDF service commanders, our visiting delegates, allow me to observe all protocols. Your Excellency, sir, at this point, we would like to have the reading of the eulogy, and I will call Mrs. Dr. Modoni Rabuku to read for us the eulogy before we proceed to the tributes. So, Mrs. Dr. Modoni Rabuku, kindly, if you may approach and read for us the eulogy. Welcome. Your Excellency, my name is Mrs. Mudoni Rabuku, and it's an honor to be able to read the eulogy for our father, the late General Francis Omondi Ogola. Late General Francis Omondi Ogola was born on 12 February 1962 in Siaya County. He was enlisted into the Kenya Defense Forces as an officer cadet on the 2nd of May 1984 and commissioned as a second lieutenant on 3rd May 1985, upon which he was posted to Moi Air Base, where he later trained as a pilot. During his career in the Kenya Defense Forces, General Ogola held several command, staff, and instructional appointments. In command, he was a commanding officer, like Kipia Air Base, tactical flight wing in 2007, and also base commander, like Kipia Air Base from 2008 to 2012. Upon promotion to Brigadier on 10th April 2012, he was appointed the Deputy Air Force Commander and later on promoted to Major General on the 13th July 2018 and appointed Commander at Kenya Air Force. On 23rd July 2021, he was also promoted to the rank of Lieutenant General and appointed the Vice Chief of, Defense, of the Defense Forces, a position he held till 28th April 2023, when he was promoted to the rank of General and appointed Chief of the Defense Forces. Due to his dedication to service, the late General Francis Omondi Ogola was awarded several medals, among them Moran of the Golden Heart MGH, Elder of the Burning Spear, Head of State Commendation, among others. General Francis Omondi Ogola leaves behind a widow, Mrs. Eileen Kadambi Ogola, and two children, Lona Achieng Omondi and Joel Rabuku Omondi Ogola. He also leaves behind one daughter-in-law, Mudoni Jengamora, and a grandson by the name of Tajib Bagara. Thank you. Kali, let's appreciate her with a clap, Tafadali. Thank you, thank you. Next, we'll move to the tributes. And at this point, I would like to invite Professor Fred Were, who will speak on behalf of the friends uh, of the family. Professor Fred Were to speak on behalf of uh, friends of the family. Welcome. Let me take my breath first, Excellency, uh, President of the Republic of Kenya, Excellency, the First Lady of the Republic of Kenya, allow me to say all other the protocols observed. So I salute to the fam primary family, uh, Eileen, Joy, Lana, and the little one. Michael, both a friend, and part family, but bigger friend even than family. I first met uh, the general 
about 45 years ago, when he was a 17-year-old young man battling to go to high school, what we called high school then. Uh, I had met him because I was dating his cousin, who is sitting next to me there. I saw I sort of joined the family from then. I could speak for too long, but I'll just make one short remark about Francis. Francis was dedicated to everything that he did and measured everything that he did as well. Francis and I regularly sat to have a glass of wine or two. He would take one glass when I take six because he had control of things better than myself. He would not try to stop me, but he would very controlled. Francis, to his death, never came late for a social meeting, let alone the serious ones that uh, uh, His Excellency would require him. I can assure you that even the little matters of just going to say hello, he kept his time. So in addition to being the in-law, he was a great friend. I'll just give you one short story of a few words. Some years ago, I was the dean of the School of Medicine, the University of Nairobi. Then a gentleman, very well dressed, came and sat outside. I didn't know because I'm inundated with the people, people's issues. So my secretary came and said, there's a very well dressed fellow here. Who says he'll wait his time? I said, does he have a student with him? He said, no, he's alone. I said, OK. Knowing how long it took me with my students, primarily, he said, let me come and pull out this well dressed gentleman. It was my brother-in-law, and he had come to plead for some, one thing, that he is in the Air Force. He's not having enough doctors trained into specialists, pediatricians like me, surgeons. What can I do? I told my brother-in-law, we call it Mukhwas in my language, the other side, or Ora in Kijaluo, that you bring them. The purpose of this national university is to train, and if I love to train for the armed forces, that's the best thing I would do. Permit me to leave it there, because you know, there's a list of people who have a thing or two to say. But I and many others, we have lost a friend indeed, and we accept that uh, that's a destination for all of us. Thank you. Next, I would like to now call upon Mr. Hezekiah Odor, a brother to the late general, to also give a tribute from the family side, Hezekiah Odor. We can give him a warm clap as he's coming, just to encourage him. Karibu sana. His Excellency the President of the Republic of Kenya, all protocols are served, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Canon Ezekiel Dur, the firstborn in the family of General Ogola. General Ogola was the fifth born in the family of Mze Joel Okech Oyeo and Mamadamaris Okello. General was a very loving man to the family. And when we received the sad news of General, when we were preparing for the 100 years celebration of our dad, it was very sad indeed. General was a very staunch Christian who loved prayers and read the Bible severally. He did a lot even to his church. He did a lot even to his community. At the moment, General has left a very big gap in our family because he was taking care of our dad, making sure that he gets medication and checkups regularly. He was also making sure that he sent something to the widows who were in his hands. There were over 30 widows. 
He also made sure that the students who are orphans in the area never missed their education. And he had no love boundaries in regardless of economic background, social or education background of any person. So we thank God for his life. In the book of Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all other things shall be added unto you. He added, he was considering that part, and God added him all that he required. At the moment, he has also left a very young lady, my sister-in-law, Eileen. At least some concerns can be made to make sure that her life continues because her status in life had gone to a certain level. And now General has left some gap. Otherwise, I thank each one of you to condole with us. Have safe journey masses at the end of the function. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, I would like to call upon Mrs. Paris Onyango, who is a sister to the general, to also come and speak briefly. And as she is coming also to recognize the presence of some leaders we have, we have Honorable Kalonzo Musioka in the house. We also have Honorable Martha Karua in the house. Thank you for joining us. Why don't we put our hands together for Mrs. Paris Onyango as she comes to also speak. Your Excellency, the President of Kenya, the Deputy President, the Church, before I speak, my work was to facilitate his coming here today. He is called Mr. Sewe. I want him to sing that song before I talk. this song this studio be ready it is a song that i composed and so i've translated it into 24 languages Ding na, e 
Wapendwa wangu tunasafiri kuelekea mbinguni. Mbinguni ndio kwetu. We are sojourners, we are traveling. Nena we enjoyed one more. Acha go with Mardio Edala. Dala, 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 let Kendo Rien Dala Wamo Kwe. Mano Dala Gi Yesu Maruda. Nena we enjoyed one more. Acha go with Mardio Edala. Dala. Dala, dala, let Kendo Rien Dala Wa. Oh, Mano Dala Gi Yesu. Tokoro. Tafadali. Mikono Ju. Kwa kumpatia mungu tukufu. Asante Generali. Hamefanya vye mambeleza mungu. Aha, maga weyoni. Yesu en salaba. Almost there. Ere gima di mona, zonje dala kor ere. Gima di genga e kataluen, gan katari shobuzo na. Great people, we are getting to the last stanza of the song. Allow me to give honor to this great man who loved my song. was my brother's request. Your Excellency, 
I just want to surprise you that today is our second time of meeting in a podium like this. The first time we met with you, we were invited in Willie Bett and Faith Rono Bett. We went for a koto, and I was talking on behalf of spiritual mother for faith. You talked on behalf of Willie Bett. And I remember I said, we are giving the best, the, the, a good lady to, to bet. And yet, then you said, Mrs. Onyango, we are giving the best man. I'm so happy that they are happily married. Thank you very much. God is good. I want to talk about my, my brother. Hallelujah. If I shake, don't worry. <laughs> Number one, I want to bring condolences from my family and I to Irene. Joey, my brother's son. Achieng Nyarawadwa. Achieng is named after me. We were very close with the general. So, I just want to talk about general, the qualities the general had. General was a special child in our family. In fact, our mother really loved him more than us. So sometimes we could just prick his head, I mean, because he was loved too much. As we are being beaten and him, he was not being beaten. And he followed that. He, he followed those qualities. My brother is a kind man, loyal man, very dedicated, very committed to, to everything he does. He, he did things to perfection. My brother was a good Christian, a servant leader of God. He walked the talk. He did his best in Christian life and life in general. So I want to tell you the three things my brother told me. We used to visit him and he could tell me one, two, three. Number one, he told me, Paris, a soldier can die anytime. So if I die, I need to be buried within 48 hours. I said, what do you mean? And then he said, Paris, I know you, you can give them problems. So I'm adding you more hours. Let it be 72 hours. The second thing he told me, I had to write them down so that I don't talk of my own things. The second thing he told me, he took me to the graveside and he told me, this is where I'll be buried when I die. The third thing he told me, when I die after burial, Jeshi to give Mama Chieng money to go for holiday. So Jeshi, you have work to do. Mama Chieng must go on holiday. Three things. My brother walked with God every single day. I remember we have been organizing for, for Baba's birthday, and today was Thanksgiving to the church. So we prepared everything. Little did I know, my brother was organizing his death. So, what I want to say, that my brother has fought a good fight. He has won the race. He kept the faith. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you very much. One more round of applause for her, please.
at this point to speak on behalf of the immediate family of uh, the late General Gola. Allow me to invite Lona Achieng Ogola, who will speak on behalf of uh, the immediate family. And as she's coming, let me also recognize Dr. Doto Mashaka Biteko, Deputy Prime Minister, Tanzania, representing Her Excellency, the President, Samia Suluhu. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, friends. I would like to start by inviting one of my dad's friends. Charlene Ruto, Her Excellency. They had a very strong bond over many things, and she asked me to share this spot with her. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Allow me to stand on the protocol that has already been observed in the interest of time. Our condolences to the family of General Ogola, Mama Irene, my sisters Acheng and Mudoni, and brother Joel and all the relatives. Not just from me and my siblings, but from the young people of Kenya. Kenya has lost a chief of defense forces, but as young people, we are deeply saddened because we have lost our mentor and our champion. Without a doubt, a very high percentage of our defense forces is made up of young people. But General Logola's influence went beyond our young people in the defense forces to those in various leadership positions and fields, such as the climate space, sports, health practitioners, and many more. Some messages I have received from the young people. I met him last year, and he spoke so highly of the Africa Youth Climate Assembly, and even inquired on how we could mainstream the culture of environmentalism and climate action in the forces. We might still need to do this in his honor. Another one, I am still in disbelief. I read his last text to me a time like now last month, and I just broke down. He truly was our champion. May he rest in peace. Personally, I met General Ogola only once, but once was enough for me to experience his kindness, his genuine care, and love for the young people, and his determination to support us to succeed. His death has hit my team members and I so hard, because in the fight for youth inclusion, many listen to us, but few encourage, support, advise, guide. General Ogola was among the few. I really don't know if we'll ever find another one like him, but as young people, in his honor, we aim to live a life like his, of good character, humility, and integrity. May the soul of our mentor and our champion rest in eternal peace. Thank you. Thank you so much, Charlene. Our message will be a two-part message. I will deliver the message to the country, and my brother will come on up and deliver the message for the people of Siaya County and its borders. Ladies and gentlemen, it is such a privilege to stand before you today. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Ladies and gentlemen, God is good. God is good all the time and his plans for us are always good. His plans are especially good for those that love him. And my father loved him, and my mother loved him, and I loved him. So even though I cannot make sense of the events that happened this week, I give God praise. And his praise will not leave my lips because he is God. He has seen beyond today, he has seen beyond the next 100 years, and he saw that this was good, so I give thanks. So let us not entirely lose ourselves in the morning. Let us celebrate a life well lived together. Bless the Lord with me. I want to talk about one thing, um, and one thing only. I had many, but I'll focus on one thing, his pursuit of excellence. I posted about my father for the first time ever. Immediately, Joel confirmed that he was actually dead. He did not like social media. He did not like being in the limelight. He appreciated just doing his work in the silence. And 
not having people talk about it. So not many people knew he was my father, and not many people knew we were related. But I was deeply, deeply, deeply inspired by his work. I'll pause for a second as our brothers take their respects. Thank you, friends. God bless you. So I'll talk about his pursuit of excellence. In the aftermath of my post, I, was, I thought I was only posting it to my global team so that people know where I am and why I'm missing for a month or more. And it blew up, and I didn't expect that. But I promised I'd tell stories of his pursuit of excellence, and I'll tell two memorables what, right, right here, right now. A couple of people were digging around and asking, how is it that his daughter did all these things? She got her engineering degree from MIT and from Stanford and a business degree from Cambridge. Like, what kind of parent creates and upbrings children like this? And I'm here to share with you the kind of man that raises children like me. And I wish I could talk about Dre, but he likes his privacy even more. He's amazing and super smart as well. Now, parents, if you're wondering, how do I get my child to change not just Kenya, but the world? Live it. Our children learn by how we show up in this world. And people here have stolen my speech because I was going to talk about how he gave 110% to everything. He never needed to tell Joey or I, work hard, read hard, because we saw him. We saw him do it. Even before I was born, he was reading the Bible cover to cover every year. And on hard years, like 2022, 2022 was a hard year in our family, he read the Bible cover to cover twice. And there's a competition, and I'm the slowpoke on my family, but because we saw him live it, we were inspired to be it. That's the easiest way to teach your children to change the world. It's not telling them. It is doing. And because he never used to talk about his reading of the Bible, he actually just used to show it. Now, when we talk about his work and his pursuit of excellence, he worked as if he was working for God. He had an audience of one. Anything he was doing, he was working for God and God alone. And we saw it. Let me tell you, this man, when I was in, already in college and Joey was about to go into college, he went back to university in Nairobi with my peers. I'm not sure about you, but I wouldn't be that humble. I'm not sure I could make it with Gen Z in class. And he was in class with my classmates. Now, let me set the stage for you. He's in the parallel program. He's based in Lake Kipia Air Base. He's commuting between Nanyuki and Nairobi for classes, for exams. And those of you who've been to the University of Nairobi know it's not an easy path. And Operation Linda Inchi was fully in session, and he had a lot of responsibilities in Lake Kipia Air Base across the borders. And this man excelled. He got a first class honors with my generation. He was in class with my peers. How could I not but be this? I'll tell you another short story. In 2005, he was posted to France. My father does not speak French, or he did not at that point. He had six months to learn a new language from scratch, because failure was never an option in his mind. Do you know the man learned French? And he had to pass to a certain level for them to, be, uh, to accept him. It was Napoleon Bonaparte School, the best military school in France. The man did not know French, but he didn't tell his bosses, I can't do it. He jumped right into it, full energy, and he learned French. Now, let me give you a complication. During this period, he swallowed a fish bone. It got lodged in his intestines and he was hospitalized for close to two months. He was my size. When I got out of third form and I went to see him in Armed Forces Memorial, he was my size and I was broken. And here he was, sneaking out of Forces Memorial with my mom to go to Alliance Francaise to take his French exams so that he doesn't disappoint the government of Kenya, even as a junior officer. He made it. He passed that level that was needed. He did his postgraduate diploma. And he made excellent leaders and friends from around the world, which is why he's getting so many messages. He met a lot of them in that school. And they were reaching out to us, and they've been so supportive. Actually, before I forget, Kenya Defense Forces, you all have been my family since my bath. 
and I'm so grateful for the love, support, care you've shown for me, Joey, mom, and the rest of the family in this period. I'm so grateful. My heart is filled with so much thanks for you. Public servants, distinguished guests, you all have been so caring. We so appreciate you. So, if you leave with only one thing from what I have said today, please pursue excellence. Pursue excellence and work as if no one else is watching you but God, because then your reward is in heaven. He didn't need the title to lead. That's why he rejuvenated military Christian fellowship with Muhashimi Wadraf Kingani over there. That's why he found himself leading Habitat for Humanity Kenya, even when there's not, he was always giving his good ideas. He had so many ideas for the country. That's why he was busy planting millions of trees with the forces under his fierce influence. He's planted so many trees for Kenyans. He had such a big heart for this nation. In closing, I'll tell you of his love for Kenya and his loves that you haven't heard of before. He had a big love for his family. He took me to school. Every day he was in the country for all of my elementary school. He loved his family. Fathers, show up for your family because your presence makes a difference. Even now at my big age, he would still show up for me at the airport. He would show up and take me shopping. He would show up and go bowling with my, my son and my brother. I love you and I'm so grateful that I get to come home to you after this hard day. You make it bearable. He loved us so dearly. So please love your families and give your all. If all of us can just take a bit of this and give our all to the country, our country will be fast walled in no time. And I look forward to carrying on that legacy with my brother who will give his love letter to the people of Siaya, Alego, Kisumu, and the people of this land. Joey, please come up. Thank you all. Excellency President, Excellency First Lady, Excellency Deputy President, I have been caught unawares the last three days. I've been ambushed at the last minute to say something, but Yesterday, I talked about the military and family man. Today, I want to talk about the son of Alego. You know, Your Excellency, even up to yesterday, people were still speculating, oh, president appointed him because of this, oh, president appointed I want to clear the air with the conversations I had with my father about his time with the president. Uh, he didn't really divulge any national security issues, but generally, I feel it's important to first of all clear the air. The president didn't have to appoint him first of all, and initially, he saw his competencies and decided that this is the man for the job. But very quickly, they started becoming friends and they formed a serious chemistry, which he would tell me, I have had a very good meeting with the boss. You're not telling me what it is. And it's not the president alone. The deputy president as well. I really enjoyed his company. They formed a serious working security relationship of securing the country. And his cabinet secretary. These people became like brothers. I've seen, oh, someone on Twitter saying, oh, it was this rules, oh, the president was in a corner. And I actually feel bad for the three of them because I know it went beyond the working relationship, and they are working to change this country very seriously, and it's a serious blow to the three of them. That one I'm saying, I talk to him personally. None of, you, none of you know that information, but I know he had a very, very good working relationship with His Excellency. Na ata niliona Excellency jana umeshika macho kidogo, what wakasema hii ni machozi ya, ya, ya crocodile, these are fake. In my heart, from what I know, I know it was genuine. I know it was genuine. <laughs> now, when it comes to this area, the president mentioned, actually deputy president mentioned yesterday, they came for a working tour and decided to come to our home for 
lunch and we relaxed for the whole evening. He spent four or five hours with us and there were many discussions. One of the discussions I had with both Excellency Deputy President and the President was a project which I pitched to both of them and they really encouraged me. Now, this project, Your Excellency, I didn't tell you the main purpose of it and the end goal. The end goal was to change the lives of the people of Nyanza. We, I had an elaborate plan that in the next two, three years, all these primary schools you're seeing here to be fully rehabilitated. We had plans to build many more churches. We had plans for everyone to clean water, to have clean water. You don't have to be a politician to make a difference to your country. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't. Sometimes the politicians make so much noise, but the results, we can't see them. And And that one I'm not afraid of saying. Your Excellency, this mandate was given to me by God himself more than 14 years ago. I took my dad and I made him take me to all the graves of all the great Luo leaders around. We went to Jaramogi's home, we went to Acheng Oneko's home, we went to Robert Oko's home, I was privileged to meet my wife. And Your Excellency, God put something in my heart to change the lives of the people in this region. I'm making a public announcement today. And it is nothing political, I'm not interested in politics because I have a plan, both Excellencies are aware of it. All I am asking for is their continued support. And Nita Waita Mufungwe Mashule na Makanisa Yeri Mpaka Museme Yue Metosha. Ata Sasa Toka Yeri Ukuje Saidietu. That one, Your Excellency, I commit to you before God, the public, and the President. I will change this area. In fact, my first school that I wanted to start working on was is Pap Nyadiel, just down the road. But my father, having been brought here, this will be my first place. And Your Excellency, so knowing your working relationship with him, let me just put this to rest. As a family and as a community, we thank you for putting your trust in general. Uh, you are not lucky to come by road. You came, I think, by helicopter. But on the road, people from all the counties on the way here, Kisumu, all the markets along the road, they are bidding farewell to the general. They didn't even know him, some of them but they've lost a son of the land, and he was a great man. And the only way I can continue his legacy is by what I've said, because even in, I think it's Equatorial Guinea, where when a general dies, I would just walk to the coffin, take his ranks and medals, and I start giving orders to the generals there. Sasa wewe kamata ile pale, kamata ile pale. So Your Excellency, once again, thank you very much. Now what watch a kusema is oman and oza what yo he did this this these guys were friends in state house. Ninyam Jaiku and Uko, Mimi Mzendo Alkwana niambia and upenda president sana, they are good friends. So yo maneno from today, unless you're quoting me, Mwachan and Nayo. Na kwanza yo bloggers always posting those things. Let me just say your excellency. When my mom called me and told me your dad has gone down in a helicopter crash, they are very useless bloggers. You're so quick to post pictures. I've been told by my mother my father's gone down. Ten minutes later, I'm seeing a helicopter burning. What does that mean? Of course he's dead. And people are so insensitive. So you broke the news. Umepewa EGH for breaking the news that the general is dead. Let us be sensitive. Tafadali, bloggers, watch your media. Mombiwa bloggers, watch your mcheso. I'd mentioned them by name. Lakini yo, yo tabia pana. And I really want to appreciate, I won't mention the person who finally told me Mze has rested and really encouraged me in that moment and told me, now is the time to be strong. Kwa hayo mengi na machache, mabibibi na mabwana, asante nisan. That was the CIA tribute. Yesterday was a military one. 
On Friday during his memorial, we have very many stories about General, which would have everyone laughing for very many minutes. So hopefully you can join us then as well. Asante Nisana. Thank you very much, Joel. Your Excellency, the son of a general, speaks like a general. Let's give him one more round of applause as he takes his seat. And we now move from the family, and we want to have a church representative. And on behalf of the church, let me call Mr. Philip Opio, who is going to speak on behalf of the church. Mr. Philip Opio, kindly, if you may advance, so that you may give the remarks on behalf of the church. After that, we'll move then to the military. Tumpigia makofi akija. Karibu sana. The Excellency, the President, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, the mourners present, I want to greet you in the name of the Lord. I'm a member of the church, St. Thomas Church. We used to be in the church with the general, and he impressed us so much. On 31st, he was there, 31st, Last month, we were with him. He took the Holy Communion. It was an ordinary church. All of us were there. And my purpose to come here is, is to give his contribution to the church. But his contribution is anchored on the following. The late was a contributor based on Matthew 6, verses 2 to 4. And I want to repeat. Matthew 6, verses 2 to 4. And I quote verse 3. But when you do charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. That was the general. He did a lot of in our village, in our church, but he never wanted it to be mentioned. Now that I'm here, I will apologetically say the following that the general did. With apology, please. His contribution in the church started way back in 1980 when he was a youth. The general, the, general, the general Christmas and Easter envelope, in Anglican we have envelopes, always reach the church of St. Thomas. In 1990s, he intensified his contribution towards the church development. The climax came with the construction of the new church, which was created this morning. The church began, the building of the church began on 16th September 2016. He contributed 90% toward the construction of that church. And 100% contribution towards the furniture in that church. We members of St. Thomas Nduru, we are deeply saddened but grateful for him. He later drilled water in the church compound and mounted two tanks of 10,000 liters each, which supply water to the church, Nduru Mixed Secondary School, Nduru Primary School, and the dispensary. On Sunday, 31st March 2024, he was in the church and not only contributed generously, but also sent 100,000 to St. Andrew's Church, ACK, which is our neighbor, during their fundraising. 
There's one thing that we also acknowledge that he contributed. His prayer in the church attracted so many youth. The population started, of the church started going up. And I believe by the end of this year, we were going to raise a lot of money. In the learning institution, we renovated all the classrooms and offices of Nduru Primary School, where the, the family learned. He supplied over 100 desks on his own. He bought playing boards, uniforms for schools, team, and supply goalposts for netball, volleyball, and football. The community, community provided financial support for the disadvantaged families and supported widows and orphans. All in all, he was a generous contributor in the society. May God bless his soul. May God bless the family. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. Next, we'd like to have the Vice CDF, Lieutenant General Charles Kahariri, who will come and represent the military. We can put our hands together as we welcome him. Welcome, sir. Excellency the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces, Honorable Dr. William Samoy Ruto and Mama Rachel Ruto, uh, Deputy President, Your Excellency, all protocols observed because of time. Uh, sir, the military uh, gave us the opportunity yesterday uh, to give an honor ceremony to our fallen general. So today we will not say much. Uh, I'm standing here, sir, first with your permission, with the Air Force commander, because we need to recognize that general was first and foremost an Air Force officer, an S pilot, the best fighter pilot Kenya has ever produced. I would like uh, to let General Omenda just say something in line with his career as a service commander. Uh, just for a minute, sir. General Ogola was a fine airman. Above all, he was a leader he was a commander, and he was a mentor to all of us in the Kenya Defense Forces. On behalf of all airmen, women, and the entire Kenya Defense Forces, I want to condole with the family and the entire nation. May the almighty God rest his soul in eternal peace. Amen. Uh, Mama Eileen Ogola, uh, the family, uh, we've had what Joy has said and her sister. Madam, be assured that you are a KDF family. And we not only will do it because you are, but if we don't, His Excellency has already given those instructions that we must take care of you. We, he didn't have to because we are part of us, but we will definitely ensure that you are well taken care of. We wish to today, Your Excellency, just convey condolences of the KDF to the wider family. Uh, of the late general, now that we are in his home area, 
please accept our heartfelt condolences, as well as the people of Siaya and the general region of Nyanza, uh, because this was your girl and son that uh, you will be dearly missed. So kindly accept our condolences. Uh, Your Excellency, uh, as uh, has been mentioned, the General uh, had friends uh, far and wide. Today, Your Excellency, uh, we have with us uh, the CDF of the United Republic of Tanzania, uh, General Jacob John uh, Msunda. Uh, could you please? Uh, Your Excellency, the CDF, CDF Malawi General Paul Valentino Firi. Uh, the CDF of Burundi, General Prime Nyongambo. <laughs> Your Excellency, the CDF of Namibia uh, was on his way. However, due to uh, some uh, tra uh, some challenges in Joburg, he, uh, the flight had to be cancelled, so he he returned back to Namibia. However, uh, he was able, then he had been preceded by a delegation led by, led by Brigadier uh, Nangolo. And two participants. We also saw, have uh, from Rwanda, uh, Major General uh, Vincent Nyakanundi, the Army Chief of Staff. And uh, from Uganda, sir, uh, a delegation led by Lieutenant General Charles Okidi, the Air Force Commander. <laughs> Sir, the messages still keep coming, and we should make sure to share with the family uh, because of uh, the General's uh, networks. Allow me at this point to just say again, uh, as a military, uh, the loss that we have felt, and once again, assure His Excellency that as the General would have wanted, uh, we continue to soldier on and ensure the security of this country. So nothing has really changed as far as our duties are concerned. Fair thee, our General, may his soul rest in peace. Thank you, Excellency. We now want to move to for defense, Honorable Adam Dwale to come and give his tributes and also handle the part of the executive. Welcome, sir. Your Excellency and the Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces, Your Excellency the First Lady, Your Excellency the Deputy President, leaders, Your Excellency, my brother and friend and our general told us how his ceremony should be conducted and how he should be buried. And Mama Eileen and the children have confirmed that to us. And in a very short ceremony, let me take this opportunity to invite the governor of Siaya County, Governor James Orengo, to make remarks and then we take the program from there. Asante. To, 
So Eileen Ola and the family, to the President of the Republic of Kenya, the First Lady, the Deputy President, the Azimio leadership led here by Kalonzo Musioka and Martha Karua, the Speaker of the National Assembly. I, before I say anything, and I think it is important that uh, we say this, something on this solemn occasion. Allow me, because I saw Dr. Buru Oginga step in, allow me to invite Dr. Buru to come and say something. Dr. Buru. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, and His Excellency, the Deputy President, and the First Lady, and the family of the late General Logola, and all protocols observed, I stand here on behalf of my family the family of the late Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, uh, on whom I represent as the chair. <laughs> <laughs> now, the late Ogola here was, uh, is our maternal uncle, and our mother comes from this village. And therefore, we come here as relatives of Ogola. I also come here to bring condolences of my brother, Yakom Raila Amolo Odinga, who has sent me to come because he is a bit indisposed. He could not come personally, but he has asked me to come and represent him and the family. So I also want to uh, bring condolences of Ohuru Kenyatta, the former president of Kenya, His Excellency, who has also brought his con condolences to the family. He is out of the country, but he has uh, asked me to bring his condolences to the family. Now, I would only want to mention one word after saying words of condolences and sympathies to the family, I would just like to say that the, the death was an accident, but even though it is an accident, in this region we have had many such accidents, and we have also had assassination of leaders from this region. So when such things happen, we are a bit suspicious, not because of anything, but we want to know the truth. We want to know the truth. And uh, I want to ask our uncle, the general's son, not to be impatient with us. It is not because of anything. It is just because once beaten, twice shy. So we are asking for no stones to be left unturned and let us know the truth of who killed our uncle General Ogola. He was a, he died too soon, and we are a bit uh, shaken by his death. And uh, you know, you people know, we lost Tom Boyer in very tragic circumstances. We lost Ouko in very tragic circumstances. And when we lost Ouko, I was part and parcel of the team of parliament which was investigating the death of Ouko. 
And I can tell you it was very sad because the regime at that time managed to convince the family to be very protective and not to allow people to go into details. So young man, please do, just allow investigators to do their work. Now, with those very, very few remarks, I would once again want to wish that our uncle is uh, rested in peace in heaven and let the Almighty put him in the best place and was one of our best sons, one of the best sons from this area. We wish that he, the Almighty puts his soul in peace and let his family also rest here and we shall be with you all the times. Thank you very much. Hello. Ero Kamano. Angeo Nikae. Wan Gejo Amangan Mubiro. Toy Jomobiro Ka. Nitie Jomoyer. Mokber Ka. Alunga Lunga Jomoko Muka Nisogi Nigin Kai. O tell Nigi Gi Speaker O Kode Gi Members Ma County Assembly Masiaia. Kama unti e mundu chunga ne malumu no neu. Erogen kanyo. Mara reyo. No kwa ya ni mundo. Chungi members of parliament. Gingen kai. To lismo nega oken la kai poka yodo. Kora atandi meli akeni in mechi ni kamo debi. Oya ore uru joka nyanam, uru ako elo, yomuru ako elo tim nakamai. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya and the Commander of the, of the Defense Forces, Your Excellency, the First Lady, the family of my friend, Mama Eileen, and your wonderful children, Joel and Lona, the Deputy President, the Speaker of the National Assembly, the Cabinet, as a new leadership led by Her Excellency Martha Karua and, uh, and, and His Excellency Stephen Kalonzo Musioka, and all the protocol observed, members of the clergy led by His Grace, the Archbishop uh, of the Anglican Church of Kenya. I really do not have much to say today other than to mention my colleagues who have joined us. But before I do that, Your Excellency, allow me to say that uh, Many of us in the political circle did not know General Ogola until the day he was made the commander of the Air Force. When the appointment was done, I remember me talking to my colleagues in parliament and asking ourselves, from where does he come from? Is he from Migori? Is he from Siaya? Because we had heard that there was also a General Ogola from the, those sides of Migori. Then I was told by my colleagues that actually he comes from your constituency. So I took the journey of finding out who General Gola was. So I, I used my contacts from here, and I was given his number, and I reached out to him. So when I reached out to him, we, within two days, gave me an appointment. Actually, he gave me a dinner date. And we had dinner for about four hours. Because I wanted to know, this is a very big man. We don't know him. Where has he been? So he told me that actually he has been around serving the country in various places, some inside and outside the country. So General Gola was largely a private person. He was very private, and they did not want people to know him. At that time, I started to work with him closely on some of the development projects in the, in the constituency, and uh, I began to interest him on some of the things we could do. But 
he told me that we will work together with you, but I don't want people to know that I'm the one who's doing all these projects. So there are so many projects which uh, General Gola did around here, especially in the school that he went to, Nduru Primary School. He came one day and he began to innovate the old school. And when I visited the school, I found workers working and doing everything, but I was expecting the members of the Kenya Defense Forces to be the ones who are working on the, on the school. No, they were not. It was, the people working there were just people he had hired with his own resources. Many a times I was not comfortable with this simplistic approach to life because I could meet him around here driving in one car. And I would ask him, uh, my brother, the position you hold is very big. As a Luo, you need to be very flamboyant. <laughs> and and, uh, and Ogola told me that, no, me, I'm a very simple man. Uh, I don't need people to know what I'm doing. I wanted to tell you something which uh, we used to do with him. During army recruitments, uh, people would call me and tell me, please talk to General Ogola so that we can get some of our people hired. But I developed a system where I would give people his mobile number and they would send him messages. I would tell them, send the messages, but don't say I'm the one who has, who has referred you. People, people, people who would send him messages would come back to me and tell me, by the way, Moshimiwa, uh, General Ogola helped us. Our son was hired in the army. So that is how we related with General Ogola. He uh, uh, was a fine man. And uh, Your Excellency, let me say this. When, uh, this Boma story came up, I was taken aback, Your Excellency. Because I remember during 20, 2022 campaigns, I reached out to him and told him, General, uh, can you support my campaigns? So he, he didn't say anything. He invited me to Nairobi to have a meeting with him. I thought I was going to get some money for campaigns. He gave me two hours of lecture about the code of conduct of the military. <laughs> that. The military is a, a political, and it means that even his own resources, which he, he earned from the military, cannot be used for politics. So that's why when this debate that the general was trying to engage in what I would refer to as espionage, I could not believe it. And I want this to go on record that that General Logola, who is seated here, would not be engaged in something like that. I want to, I want to give Accolades to Your Excellency. Your Excellency, you, you earn the kudos for being the first Commander-in-Chief to make a Luo to be the Chief of Defense Forces. That, I, I give it to you. Your Excellency, there are some positions in this country that Luos will never occupy. If a Luo was in such a position, that would be a miracle. Your Excellency, the Cabinet Secretary for Treasury, that position, a Luo has never held that position. Uh, Luo has never held the position of P principal secretary, treasury. Even the attorney general, we have never seen those positions. So I think, let us remember that General Logola is the first Luo to, to, to sit in that position. And that's why, Your Excellency, when members of my community are expressing their concern about the way, about the, way the end has come, and let us agree, my, my friends, the end is smelly, the end is smelly. The end is smelly, it's not as clean as the beginning. We would only ask you, Your Excellency, the way you broke the record of appointing him as the commander. Get the report about what happened to, them, to General Ogola. That is the only thing that we want. We want this thing will give, us, will, will give us a closure as his community. And lastly, Jim, lastly, I wanted to say that, uh, uh, Your Excellency, you together with Raila Molodinga, we were engaged in the process of uniting the country through what we call the NADCO process. My majority leader, the Honorable Kumani Chungwa, is here, together with Aaron Cheriot, Senator Aaron Cheriot. They, they did a wonderful job in bringing us this document. Your Excellency, we want this document to be implemented in totality because that is the only way for us to assure that the country will achieve unity. 
Let me add that uh, our, the Vice President Kalonzo Musioka, the leader of Azimio, who was part of the team that was developed the NATCO report, we would be interested in seeing that that report is implemented to its totality. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Now, now I want to just introduce members of parliament who are here. If I mention your name, please just rise up. We have the majority leader in the National Assembly, Honorable Kimani Chungwa. We have uh, the Honorable Silvano Sosoro. We have the Honorable Eva Obara. We have the Honorable Christine Ombaka, the Sierra County Women Rep. We have uh, Felix Oduorja Lango, the MP for Langata. We have uh, the Honorable Gideon Ochanda, MP for Bondo. We have the Honorable Mark Nyamita, MP for Uriri. We have the Honorable Jared Okelo, MP for Nyando. We have Alicia Diambo. We have James Nikal. We have the Honorable Mata Wangari, MP for Gilgil. We have the Honorable Mboko Milemba. We have the Honorable Didmas Baraza. We have the Honorable Major Deco, Garissa North, Garissa Township. We have the Honorable Esther Pasaris, uh, Nairobi Women Rep. We have the Honorable Siloya, MP for Sabatia. We have the Honorable Zaid Gianda. We have the Honorable Mutinda Mule. We have the Honorable Geoffrey Ruku. We have the Honorable Tienda Molo, MP for Riada. We have the Honorable, finally, we have the Honorable Koyo. And we have my, my, for, my uncle, the former MP for Lego Songa, the Honorable Edwin Inda, is also in our midst. Thank you, and may God bless you. Thank you, thank you, uh, Honorable Tandi. Now is my pleasure and privilege to call upon Dr. Stephen Kalonzo Msioka, Senior Counsel, to speak on behalf of the Azimio team. Thank you. Mwashmua Rais, Wajamori ya Kenya, William Ruto, ambaye tia PND Amri Jeshin Ku. And I believe more than anything else, you are here in that capacity. Mama um, Eileen, fellow mourners. I will say one thing, and with your permission, I will ask our sister mother to come and deliver the other portion. It has been said that generals don't die. They just fade away. But here we have a case of a general who did not wait to fade away. He crushed died in office, and that's why as a nation, we are gathered here to give him a, a proper send-off. I associate myself fully with what our brother, Senator Oburu has said. Mr. President, this is a straightforward thing. We have heard that um, a team has been constituted to look into the circumstances under which General Gola fail. What Kenyans want, Mr. President, is simply to make it public because then that will allay all these fears. And the matter of General Gola goes beyond our sister Eileen and her beautiful kids. It's a national thing, for the truth must come out. So, I just want to ask my sister to come, and as she comes, I want to say, rest well, a man of great faith. Anybody who can read the Bible twice in a year can only be a committed Christian. And this brother here had a secret with his maker. Alikuwa nasiri naye mokozi yesu. And that's why he has done things in a very unique manner and has had to be laid to rest and cutting huge costs. And we have full confidence in our defense forces. Please be as neutral as General Gola was. So, Erukama Noenya. Other.
Asante. God is good. And all the time, Mweshimiwa, Dr. William Ruto, na Mama Rachel Ruto, and all protocols observed, I'm here to deliver my condolences and the condolences of the Azimio Fraternity who could not be here to the family of General Ogola to Mama Eileen, the children and the entire family. Everything else has been said. I would only like to add, when an accident occurs, it's a security issue. There are security concerns which deserve an answer for the nation. And since an inquiry has already been formed, we look forward to a speedy investigation. I salute our fallen general. Fare thee well. May God bless him and his family. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And I don't watch my ten. The Lord, 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 the the Lord, the Maji bedogo, to kinyal neno kaji uwoko ko, kaka ji uwoko ni general logola. An adwa. I'm a Tambe Mokatra, Hongi Maraj. Hongi Maraj, Hongi Maraj. And in our bill, I give much more of my costume to the yellow. I do watch on the Anika Wuno, your motel on in Yasin, Ginjol, the military of Kenya. I do watch in Yimo Gandaka, no Timon or Timo Bear. Kauko wudo kako ukoni. Ago nuero kamano. I wanted to say this briefly. How do we mourn our heroes? We have had many heroes. And I was so happy when Joel when Joel was speaking here and he made a wonderful speech that your father took you to Jaramogi's mausoleum. Your father took you to where Achingoneko is buried. And I, I am sure, I am sure, I am sure that your father wants you to be part of the history of his people. I want to say this without fear of contradiction. We have mourned many times, and that's why sometimes people mistake us. We have mourned many times, and we have mourned heroes. We mourned Arguing Skodek, we mourned Tom Boyer, we mourned Dr. Uko. We mourned Odiambombai. And today we are mourning General Ogola. I therefore plead with anybody who is here, you must allow Kenyans to mourn their heroes the way they can. When I was coming here, I followed a different route. Follow a different route, the one from Luanda to Wagai. And the whole route was full of people waiting for this gallant son of ours. 
Many were waiting. I just hope that this time around, we will, with the investigations which are undergoing, will come to the final conclusion and outcome of how this happened. And I was taught in investigations. Your Excellency, I was a lead lawyer in uh, the Uko trial. In the Uko trial, there were many investigators, international, FBI, and Scotland Yard. And the first rule in investigations is that you don't rule anything out. If you want to carry a true investigation, don't, don't leave anything out. So we uh, want to be assured that nothing will be left out so that the truth comes out. The truth comes out. Your Excellency the President, just like Atandi has said, when you retire and think of appointing other positions, you see what he has pointed out, that you think of somebody from this community to be in that position. And this Constitution does not say that you must vote for so and so in order to be in government. We want a government based in our, on our Constitution so that when these positions are open, like you did, in appointing the chief, you open it to the entire republic. Finally, as General Gula rests here, me, uh, I, I, I beg you, Your Excellency, that let's, let, let, let General Gula be, not be buried in doubt. And the lingering doubt, and I was in Bomas of Kenya, I was there, I was not an agent, but I managed to go there. The lingering doubt is that there is this allegation that General Ogola went to Bomas to try and change the elections. If you accuse Orengo of me, you can accuse me. I can plead guilty, I know, even when I went there. I was just overpowered. <laughs> I was just overpowered. But if you accuse Orengo, I think that it would be a, a reasonable accusation. But General Ogola, the way I know him, and I've gone to see him, even on political issues, and he will tell me if it is that, Oachana Nile. Ata Murkomen told me that when he went to see Murkomen, it was just about development. So Murkomen, Iyo, Uwanja Wandege, Uwambie Mkubwa, Ata Mili Shamu Uwambia, Iyo Uwanja Gombe, Mufanye Araka, Tuone ya kwamba huu generali ya likuwa anatupenda zaidi na zaidi. Asante ni sana. Na mungu abweke mahali pema peponi. Thank you, Governor of CIA. Your Excellency, on behalf of the Minister of Defense and Kenya Defense Forces, and as a person who worked very closely with General Ogola as a Vice Chief of Defense Forces and as the Chief of Defense Forces. Personally, I have lost a brother. I have lost a colleague. I have lost a member of the Defense Council. I have lost a general who has put the security, the sovereignty, and territorial integrity of our country. His family will confess, Your Excellency, that even Christmas and New Year, General Gola could sacrifice and tell me, let's go and visit our troops in deep operations. Those outside the country, we were in Kismayu, we were in deep, hostile areas. He was a man who was committed to his work. He was a man 
because the office of the minister and the vice chief of defense forces are the closest officers, Your Excellency. I work with all the vice chief of defense forces and the chief of defense forces. He was a man of discipline and honor. I don't want to say more because you have interacted with me, with him too. So, Your Excellency, the rank and the leadership of Kenya Defense Forces, we have a lot to learn from General Ogola, our general. The way we will learn and have learned more with the previous Chief of Defense Forces. We want to assure you that we will leave the legacy and the dreams of General Ogola for the safety of our nation, be it in the air, land, and the sea. But Your Excellency, as our Commander-in-Chief, if you allow me, the former Prime Minister yesterday said a statement. And I want to qualify that statement. Because General Gola was very close to me, particularly when he was the Vice Chief of Defense Forces. And when the whole issue of bombers, 15th of August, was hanging over his head, he, ha he even told me, and the family can agree with me, we had conducive uh, discussion, that even he has lost weight, that this thing was disturbing him. And Your Excellency, General Ogola, was not, as the Vice Chief of Defense Forces, was not a member of the National Security Committee, which is chaired by the Head of Public Service. So how did the General Ogola went to ANSAC and to BOMAS? And as a Muslim, General Ogola shared with me text messages of his superiors and members of the National Security Committee then. And he asked three, four times. First, in the morning when he was going to ANSAC, he showed me the message that he was given, go represent me at ANSAC because of a prior other commitment of the person who was supposed to go. When he went to ANSAC, General Ogola and a direction was given to him with other colleagues, with a leader, him as a member, to go to BOMAS. General Ogola, as a respectable soldier and general, he asked and sent a text message to his bosses and asked, what am I going to do in BOMAS? And this has happened. And General Gola was told, it's been decided, you go. And I'm narrating what General Gola today is lying here, this man, told me. When he went to BOMAS, the then chairman of IBC, he told me, kept them for five hours. And the 411 came while he was in BOMAS, saying the results will be announced at three. And General Ogola then again sent a text message and saying now that the result will be announced at three, as a general, as a soldier, what am I doing here? And he was told, stay with your colleague. That text message is there. When His Excellency, when His Excellency yesterday said, I had a one-to-one -one with the General Ogola, he gave me permission to have one-on-one -on -one discussion with the General Ogola on a Monday from 7 to 9.30 p.m. in my house. His security, his drivers can confirm. And when he convinced me, because he was a man of God, when he convinced me is when he got an opportunity to relay and talk to the president with those three statements at the end of his discussion with the president. 
Today, I want to confirm that because of what happened in, to General Ogola, the president as the chairman of the National Security Council, so that, it, so that for it not to happen again, the president has directed last year that members of the National Security Committee, the IG, the DG NIS, the head of public service, PS Interior, PS Defense, CDF, PS Foreign Affairs, PS Treasury, and the Solicitor General can never again delegate the attendance of that membership to their juniors. Because tomorrow, another member of the National Security Committee will commit the same crime. So Honorable Raila Odinga was very right, very right. And I came today to qualify his statement that General Ogola, a man he knows, will not have gone to bomb us. And the people who sent him to bomb us, some of them are here. Some of the people who sent him to bomb us, some of the people who sent him to bomb us are known. They are members. So sometimes the way Joel said, let us not create a false narrative about General Ogola. Your Excellency, allow me again to make another confession as your Minister for Defense. Many of my colleagues ask me, you used to be a vibrant politician, you have changed. I have changed because I went to a different environment. Your Excellency, when General Tonje introduced that gentleman's agreement, there was General Opande, who he recommended to be the next CDF, but he did not, he was not given that chance. Many, many, the law says that a CDF will serve for four years or at the attainment of 62 years, whichever comes first. Your Excellency, this region, this region has produced decorated generals. General Owiti, General Opande, and many, many others. But because you wanted to change Kenya, you said we must kill ethnicity and regionalism in our country, Your Excellency, and I want to confirm to the nation, there were many people within even our ranks who said General Ogola should not be appointed. But they had only one reason. Very unfortunate. Very unfortunate, the reason of 15th of August. They forgot all the other credentials of General Ogola. Your, Your Excellency, you have confirmed to the nation you are not a petty leader. You are not a vengeful leader. You are not a person who will follow what happened, Your Excellency. As your Minister for Defense, you made a deliberate, with a finality, based on the credentials. He was a smart general. He was one of our finest jet, F-15 jet fighter. He has trained everybody here, including the current Air Force commander. He was a man of humility. He could walk to my office and to all the offices. I could walk to his office. Your Excellency, one day he came to me and asked me, in the holy month of Ramadan, Minister, can I fast with you for seven days? Your Excellency, 
you decided, you directed, and I went and passed the council, the defense council, your decision on the 27th of April 2023, the appointment of General Ogola, among others. And on 28th, you saw him as your next CDF. He died, you saw him on 28th of April 2023. He died on the 18th of April 2024, 10 days before he made to one year. He had good plans, Your Excellency, for the 15th of May this year of our graduation. And he told you the reforms he will introduce, and you will see it, because our team is here. Your Excellency, you'll go into the annals of history as a person who appointed not only General Ogola, not only Raimon Omolo, not only many, many Kenyans to key security positions, including myself, without regard to ethnicity, to the region they come from, and to how their communities voted in last election. Your Excellency, you will be the one that will make sure that Kenya will be a country that everybody and every community will be proud of. With those many remarks, Your Excellency, let me take this opportunity Well, yes, sir. Your Excellency, managing coalitions, as you know, is never easy. I need to tell you that I spoke on behalf of Mwangi Wairia, the party leaders of Usawa, and Mwishmua Wajakoya of Roots Party. Thank you. I forgot to mention the governor as well. Oh, I will. I will. I will. Governors who are present here, I saw Governor Otoma. You are being recognized, we recognize you, we value you, all our senators and other leaders. Your Excellency, with those very many remarks, we, the KDA family and fraternity, have lost a great general. We have defended, who defended our country. We will not let you down as our commander in chief. It's my humble duty to invite the speaker of the National Assembly, the Honorable Moses Masika Wetangula. Your Excellency, our President and Commander-in-Chief of our Forces, our First Lady, David President, the family of our fallen brother and hero, fellow mourners, Oyareuru. I stand here to bring a message of condolences from my family and from the Parliament fraternity. We have lost a great man, General Ogola was one of our finest for those of us who knew him, brilliant, unassuming, and a wonderful communicator. I had an opportunity to work with General Ogola and his colleagues during my time in foreign affairs over the peace issues in the Horn of Africa. He had clarity of mind as to what we needed to do to secure our, our region. Today, we see of a man who lived by the law, who lived by the Bible, and who lived for this country. Mine is just to wish Mama Irene and your children 
and the larger family, the protection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for you to believe in prayer, for the Bible says, Bwana aliye ju, liye bwana wajane, na baba ya mayatima. Lastly, as a country, we learn a lesson from this great man and your excellencies act to appoint General Gola. That this country needs all of us and all of us have a role to play and that parochial politics and helpful fitina will not guide us to modernize this country. We will work together as one. And General Gola, wherever you are, my brother, rest in eternal peace. We owe you more than you owe us as a country, and we pray for your soul. Thank you. Your Excellency, allow me uh, to introduce cabinet ministers present. Can you please stand? And principal secretaries present. And uh, Your Excellency, thank you. And then, Your Excellency, we also have the head of all our other security agencies. It's now my humble, please. It's now my humble duty and pleasure to invite the Prime Cabinet Secretary, Honorable Musali Amudavadi, to take over the program from here. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Mweshmua William Samoy Ruto, our First Lady, Madam Rachel Ruto, the Deputy President, Rigabe Gashagwa, Aileen Ogola, and your entire family, the leadership of the Defense Forces, friends, relatives, and all dignitaries present. Your Excellency, a lot has been said, so I will really be very brief, but with your permission, uh, let me give the Deputy Prime Minister of Tanzania, who has been sent to represent uh, Madam Suluhu, to convey a word of condolence his golden daughter, Mashaka Biteko. Thank you. Mwishmua, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, Raisi wa Jamhuri ya Kenya na Mama Ruto, Mwishmua viongozi wote, tukiongozwa na makamu wa Rais, nuguzangu wa umbolezaji wote, Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Mheshimiwa Rais, nimesimama hapa kwa niaba ya Dr. Samia Suluh Hassan, Rais wa Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania, ambaye baada ya kupata taarifa ya kuondokewa na mkuu wa majeshi hapa nchini, yeye pamoja na Watanzania wote wanaungana na wewe kukupa pole nyingi kwa msiba mkubwa ulioupata. Wewe pamoja na familia ya marehemu na Wakenya wote na vyombo vya ulinzi na usalama vya Kenya kwa kuwa wameondokewa na kiongozi mashuhuri kiongozi ambaye bila shaka kwa maneno yaliyosemwa hapa ameandika kurasa nyingi sana zitakazosomwa na vizazi vinavyokuja Mheshimiwa Rais Mheshimiwa Dr. Samia Suluh Hassan anakutakia moyo wa subira wakati huu mgumu wewe pamoja na familia lakini muhimu sana kwa wakenya wote na wale wote aliyowaongoza Mheshimiwa Rais nimesimama hapa kueleza tu kwamba yote yaliyosemwa kuhusu marehemu ni masomo makubwa kwetu sote lakini masomo makubwa kwa vijana wanaokuja tunamwombea mapumziko mema yeye lakini kwa familia 
kuyaishi yale mema yote ambayo marehemu alikuwa akiamini na kuyaishi asanteni kwa kunisikiliza Asante sana uh, naibu waziri mkuu uh, ningependa tu nitaje majina ya wale mawaziri kwa sababu walisimama na ni vizuri watu wajue kwamba uh, tuko hapa na mheshimiwa Machogu waziri wa elimu tafadhali funga mkono tuko na mheshimiwa Eliud Walo Asante sana tuko na mheshimiwa Chirchir Asante sana tuko na mheshimiwa Markomen Kipchumba Asante sana tuko na mheshimiwa Madam Malonza Tuko na mheshimiwa Zak Njeru Tuko na mheshimiwa Florence Bore Asante sana na tuko na Moses Kuria Sijui kama kuna waziri yote ambaye nimewacha nje uh, pia kwa majina nitambue PSS kuna Raymond Mbolo ambaye ni waziri wa internal security kuna Patrick Mariru kuna Alfred Kombundo kuna Susan Mangeni kuna Betty Inyangala Beatrice Inyangala kuna John Olotu, Ololuta na kuna Solicitor General Shadrack Mose Asante sana Your Excellency I will not I think Duale has spoken very passionately and he has said it all What I can only emphasize ni kwamba sisi kwa serikali yako tulimheshimu sana General Ogola kama kuna kielelezo ya heshima na integrity kwa majeshi yetu basi ogola ndio alikuwa kwa mstari wa mbele yeye ametoa heshima sana kubwa kwa taifa letu na mimi ningependa kusisitiza kwamba kama waziri wa mambo ya kigeni pia Nataka niwaambie kwamba Ogola alikuwa na kipawa cha ujuzi wake kwa mambo ya kijeshi na pia akaka, akawa na kipawa sana kwa mambo ya kuhusu diplomasia na haya yote aliyatumia vizuri sana kuhudumia taifa letu na kupeana heshima kwa majeshi yetu and let it go on record that the accolades that we have received as they convey condolences from all over the world is testimony to the integrity and professionalism of our defense forces. And we must acknowledge our defense forces have made us proud as a nation and as a region. God bless you all. May Ugola's soul rest in eternal peace and may the family find grace in God's word. Your Excellency, the Deputy President, wakati ni wako. Um, Your Excellency, the President of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief of Kenya's Defense Forces, Your Excellency, our First Lady, Mama Richo Ruto, the family of the late General, Mama Irene, Lona, and Joel, all protocols observed, God is good, and all the time, Nisalimieni kwa haya Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe tena. Your Excellency, we have accompanied you here to this great county of Siaya to honor and bury a decorated general, a career military strategist, 
an accomplished fighter pilot, a competent and focused team leader, a humble, kind man, and all of us are privileged to have served with him under you. We have come here to condo with the family and the people of this great county of Syria and to say thank you to the family and the people of Syria for giving us a great son to serve with us and serve this republic. We did spoke yesterday at the military function and therefore the president will speak on our behalf. Na kwa hivyo nauliza na heshima zote tusimame tumkaribishe Rais wa Jamhuri ya Kenya na Amri Jesh Mkuu atoe risala yake ya Rambi Rambi Mr President Asante sana tafadhali tunaweza kaeti chini asanteni Mama Aileen Ogola Watoto wake Lona na Joel Mjukuu wake Taji Pamoja na familia Jamaa Ndugu marafiki wa rafiki yetu generali ogola familia ya wanajeshi ya KDF na wananchi wote wenzangu hamjambo oyaore uru amoso ujodhurwa bwana yesu asifiwe Ebu munisalimie hawani hivyo asanteni sana. Mimi nachukua nafasi hii katika maziko haya ya kiongozi wetu wa wanajeshi Generali Francis Omondi Ogola kwa niaba ya serikali nzima na wananchi wote wa taifa letu la Kenya kuleta rambi rambi zetu kwa Aileen, Joel, Lona na familia ya ndugu yetu aliyetuacha generali Omondi Ogola poleni sana Generali Ogola ni shujaa tuliyemtambua as i said yesterday general ogola was a consummate military officer a passionate commander and a patriotic citizen of kenya of great humility and integrity General Logola was appointed as the CDF in Kenya because of his credentials, his integrity, his professionalism, and he stood tall and deserved the appointment. As I said, I was very proud working with this man, General Ogola. And I know for sure that I made the right decision. And if I had another chance to appoint him, I would appoint him again as the CDF of Kenya. I am very confident, as I was then, than in the that in the hands of general ogola the security of kenya was assured he demonstrated in strategy 
in word and in deed that he loved this country, that he wanted the best for Kenya, and he stopped at nothing to make sure that Kenya was safe and every soldier, wherever they were, inside the country and outside the country, was serving to their best of ability. And therefore, as we celebrate his life, many people don't understand the loss that we have incurred as a country. Those of you who may not have worked closely with General Logola as I did, you may not understand the kind of men that we have in this great Kenyan. There are very few leaders, there are very few people who can fit in the categorization and the shoes of General Logola. I say this passionately because I know what Kenya has lost. When I got the news that there was a plane crash, it was a very heavy moment for us and for me because I did make a commitment to the people of Kenya. And I have this to say. It is true, we have lost many Kenyans because of extrajudicial killings. It is also true that we have lost many Kenyans because of political assassinations. And I made a commitment to the people of Kenya that there will never be, and let me say this, as has been said here by others, for the avoidance of doubt and without any fear of contradiction, there shall never be again extrajudicial killings or political assassinations. There shall never be another occasion where we have bodies of Kenyans in Rivayala. It will never happen again. Not under my watch. I have full confidence in KDF. They are our foremost professional entity in Kenya. They have demonstrated beyond any doubt their professionalism and integrity. And therefore, I have full confidence that General Omenda and the team he has appointed to make sure that all details are laid bare on the accident that took away the life of General Ogola. I know the KDF are as concerned as I am, and indeed the family and every Kenyan, on the life of General Logola. And I want to assure the country that the KDF, our Kenya Air Force, have the requisite integrity and professionalism to make sure that there will be no shroud of doubt on what happened to General Ogola. Let me also say, as a country, that for a very long time, ethnic bigotry, ethnic profiling, ethnic chauvinism has informed 
our politics and the events in our country. I want to commit to Kenya that we decided and I committed we are opening a new chapter in Kenya where every Kenyan will have an opportunity on account of merit and no other consideration. There is no position that is preserved for any group or any community or any religion. Kenya belongs to all of us. I want every child, as they grow in Kenya, for them to know that merit is going to be the yardstick for the far they can go in their lives. That is the Kenya that we all want to belong to, and that is the Kenya that I believe in, and that is the Kenya that I will work hard to make sure that it becomes a reality. That is our country. And therefore, as this great Kenyan, as we lay him to rest, he is a great example of humility, a great example of integrity. You can see the influence he has had on his family. His family is a great inspiration to all of us. In fact, they have made all of us strong because they believed in God and their father brought them, very, brought them up very well. Joel and Lona, you are great examples of children. I was surprised, amazed actually, that my own daughter was greatly influenced by General Ogola. And yesterday, my daughter called me, Charlene, she's here, and she told me I must go to the funeral of General Ogola. And I want to speak. I told her, Charlene, first, there is no way you are going, and there is no way you are going to speak anywhere. <laughs> so, but as fate would have it, she found her way here. <laughs> and before I could notice, she was on the microphone. is how General Ogola was influential. Again, let me say this. I had asked my wife that since we were yesterday in uh, at uh, in Langata, maybe today she can do something else because she too insisted that I must be at the funeral of General Ogola to stand by Eileen because they were a great people to our nation. That is the kind of influence General Ogola had on people, not necessarily people they work with every day, but people who knew what he did for our country. Many people may say many things because they don't understand what those of us who have worked closely with General Ogola understand about the potential that he would do for our country. I am very sure the generals here know that they have lost a solid man. And I wish we could all spare him and give him a decent send-off. He deserves it. So, to the family, 
Mama, as I have told you, to Joel and uh, Lona, as I told you, all of us, the government of Kenya is going to stand by this gallant general of Kenya. We are going to stand by you as a family, and we are going to ensure that the plan General Ogola had for the KDF will be implemented, and the great influence he had on our country will continue. I want to thank all the leaders who have come, and all of you have come to honor this great son of our country. To give assurance again to all our children that we are opening a new leaf and a new chapter where every child in Kenya is equal. Thank you very much. God bless you. Rest in peace, General Francis Omondi Ogola. Asante Nisan. Let us appreciate His Excellency the President one more time with a round of applause for his speech and his comforting words. Thank you, Your Excellency. Let us kindly take our seats. And His Excellency's speech ties a knot on the tributes. And now would like to move to the church as we get to the tail end of this service. And we'll start with the reading of the word today. And the reading is going to be done by Professor Julius Ochuodo. After which we shall hand over to His Grace, the Most Reverend Dr. Jackson Olesapit, to give us a short word of encouragement as we continue to mourn the fallen general. So we'll allow him to access the platform where we have a reading which will be led by Professor Julius Ochodo. Thank you. His Excellency the President and the leaders herein and the clergy and the church, I plead that we relax a little bit now as we come back to church. We want to listen to the word, the eternal food that we have. I'm going to read the word, and it is from 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy, chapter 2, 1 Timothy, chapter 2, from verse 1 to verse 15, from verse 1 to verse 15, that is the whole chapter. And it reads, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority that we may live. Sorry, I was given the wrong part to read. It is 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 to verse 15. Sorry again. And it reads, you, you then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, 
and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. The hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I'm saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. Remember, Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel, for which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Verse 11. Here is a trustworthy saying. If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Verse 14, keep reminding God's people of these things. Warn them before God against quarreling about words. It is of no value and only ruins those who listen. Verse 15, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of the truth. That is the word of God. We now rise to welcome the Archbishop as he brings the word. In your programs, page three, there is a hymn, Ruoth Tingamalo. In English, it's I'm pressing on. We will sing the first verse and the refrain, then the Archbishop will come and bring the word. As we stand, let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. You gathered us here as we pay the last respect to our departed brother, as you called him home to mourn, but also to celebrate his life. Lord, it is now time that you condole us with your word, the word of life that gives us hope more than all else. So, Lord, speak to our minds and our hearts your word that we may be refreshed. 
This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please let us be seated. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, William Samoy Ruto, Your Excellency, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Rigadi Gashagwa, Her Excellency, Mama Rachel Ruto, all protocol served, Mama Eileen and your family. I take this moment to greet all of us in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Praise the Lord. Amen. Buana Yesu Asifiwe. Amen. A lot has been said, so we need now to be consoled by God's word. Indeed, this moment is a hard moment for Kenya, a moment that befell us without any one of us getting ready for it. But just before I share God's word, allow me to mention the clergy who are here, a few of them. We have the superintendent minister, Reverend Mutahi Simon from Lovington United, where General Ogola and his family worshiped regularly. We also have Reverend Joyce, from the same church, and uh, we have uh, the Reverend Amos Ololdabash, Kenya Forestry Service Chaplain. We have uh, Archbishop Emeritus Habakkuk Abogno. We also have uh, Bishop Bernard uh, Lesagi. We have many of our military uh, chaplains led by the principal chaplain, Alfayo Lilei. We have three, two other Anglican bishops, the Bishop of the Diocese of Masena West, who is our host bishop, the Right Reverend John Mark Haung, and we have our neighboring Diocese of Bondo, the Right Reverend Professor David Cordia with us. Again, Mama Eileen, on behalf of the Anglican Church of Kenya and my family, and the fraternity of the Christian family, where you belong, I bring greetings, but also condolences for what happened to you as a family and to us as a nation. For me personally, General Ogola, we became friends when I met him in Anyuki Airbus, when I became the Archbishop of the Anglican Church and also Bishop in Ordinary to the Kenyan Defense Forces, and I tried to visit all our barracks and uh, we became friends. In the hard moment that has been mentioned, after the 2022 election, Mama Eileen and General Gola came to me in church and they asked for prayers, and only one ask. If you ever meet the President of the Republic, ask him to allow me to give me an ear. And that's all. I don't fear what is going to happen to me, but uh, I only need to be listened by him. I said, because I may not access as quickly as a matter needs, let us go to the one who answers every prayer we make because you are a believer and I am a believer. So we prayed, the three of us, and uh, I left it at that. Before I ever met the president, he was announced the chief uh, of the general, uh, uh, the Kenya Defense Forces. What an answered prayer. We celebrated, we went to the church at DOD to have a thanksgiving service for God here and answer prayers. Today we are celebrating a man who many have said and described honest, capable, professional, and one who relied on God on everything, and that one encounter tells me he did not want to make a move without consulting God and have people to pray with. So we thank God that he is rested, a person who knows the Lord and who knows the way. Paul's letter to Timothy, a young man he was mentoring, and we have heard how General Gola has been a mentor to many, he wrote this letter when he was in prison. 
And uh, he told him he need not to be ashamed as a worker wherever God has put him. And he brought three analogies of dedication to service. One, that of a soldier. And he said, a good soldier of Jesus Christ is one who takes pride in taking commands and doing his work diligently and is not entangled in everyday life or in matters of civilian. And I think that's what Mweshimi uh, Watandi said. Ogola could not entertain raising money for campaigns with him. He was a soldier and a true soldier. The other analogy here is that of an athlete. No athlete who is competing is awarded unless he, do, he does it according to the rules and compete diligently and make to the finish of the race and is awarded the crown of glory when he emerges first. The next analogy here is that of a farmer. That is that who have worked hard and labored who deserves their first fruits when harvest time come. But we have also been reminded that in Christ, yes, we shall die, but because he's raised from the dead, we embark on a journey that God prepare us for eternity. And that's what verse 11 says. The saying is sure. If we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. God is calling us to a life of piousness and virtues and be virtuous in all we do in life. When we read theology for those of us who train to be theologians, one of the critical subjects we have to go through is philosophy, to understand the philosophical mind of man and what human nature holds and the capacity that we can be able to connect with the Spirit of God. And I want to quote a few quotes from a philosophy of a man called Zeno. He developed a philosophy called Stoicism because he lived in Athens, a small place called Stoa. Him was a virtuous teacher. He taught virtues. And some of the quotes I'm going to read describe the virtues General Gola had as Paul was asking Timothy to have so that he may never be ashamed as a worker who serve his God. Seno says, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. And the quality of our thoughts as Christians are sharpened by the understanding of the word of God when we read it rather thoroughly and carefully in faith. That is what the family has been telling us about General Gola, his passion to read the Bible, so that his true happiness and joy will be found at the quality of his thoughts, which are governed by the word of God, which inspires and gives us wisdom. The other quote says, Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. What we have heard from the generals and the colleagues of General Gola is he's always a fully prepared man. He's never casual about his work. He's always prepared for every day's work. And therefore, what may be called luck is only preparation meeting opportunity. I loved when I heard the daughter speak, Lona, and the courage the son has. Preparation 
meets opportunity, people may interpret luck, but that is what it is. He goes on to say, it is not death that a man should fear, but he should fear never beginning to live. So it is not death that we should fear, but we should fear a life that we have never begun to live. And I can attest there are many people who are elderly today who have never begun to live because they became so careless about what they do every day. But to him, he did not fear death. He was prepared for it. He prepared his family for it because he began to live. God's word guided him, empowered him, and enabled him. The other quote, to live a good life, we all have the potential for it if we learn to be indifferent to what makes no difference. General Gola did not pay attention to things that make no difference. He paid attention to everything that makes difference in the lives of people. That's what we had, he touched the lives of many widows. He was about this community giving water and building schools because he, la he learned this virtue that to live a good life, we all have the potential for it. If we only we learn to be indifferent to what makes no difference. Fellow mourners, we must learn to be indifferent to what does not make a difference in our own lives and in the lives of others. It is not because things are difficult, Zeno says, that we don't dare. It is because we don't dare that things are difficult. Ogola was one who dared. Any leader who dares to move and move the people, things become easier, and ability and success is in the offing. But if we fear to dare, we will never do anything. The last two, as I conclude, he says, a gem cannot be polished without friction, nor a man perfected without trials. We have to undergo trials of every nature, pain, sickness, hard moments, hard decisions to make for us to be polished like there is no gem that can be polished without friction, nor a man perfected without trials. The very last one. The best sight in the world is to see a man struggle against adversity. This describe our gallant soldiers. They are always struggling against any adversity that gives us threat. And Seno says that will be the, be the best sight in the world to watch, to see one who can be able to face adversity and conquer it. Today we have lost a hero, a man of God, a man of faith, but a commander who gave commands and we listened, and all those under him listened and were very, very happy. We celebrate his life with pride that yes, it is doable for one to be given responsibility and discharge his responsibility with courage, with zeal, with anticipation that success is always in front of us. Let us emulate him. Let us learn to trust in God. Let us learn to be obedient to the call of duty. Let us learn to move forward even when things are tough, for that is what makes the joy of this life. The realities of this life are they are all up and downs. Joyous moments, hard moments, moments of tears, but also moments of laughter. Although we are crying today and mourning, but we are also happy that we are mourning a hero who have made it at family life, 
in the national service and as a Christian who knew where he was headed. So as I conclude, these words of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, and following describe the journey of today as we take him to his final rest of the remains of the body, but we know his soul is securely fastened in God's hands. Verse 6, this is Paul talking about his eminent end moment. As for me, I am already being poured and my departure has come. I'm, I'm being poured like a libation and the time of my departure has come. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the last day. And not only me, but also to all who have la longed for his appearing. Paul said these words uh, over 2,000 years ago. But these are the very words we can attribute to General Ogola. He has fought the good fight. He has finished the race. He has kept his faith. And the crown of righteousness await him in eternity. May we emulate him in all we do every day that we too can be people of hope. In the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We will now invite the family to step forward so that we do the prayers of the family. And I will also uh, conclude with the prayers of Johnny Masses to all of us so that we may move to the next step of these days, a celebration of General Gola's life. So to the families, we pray. Just step a little bit forward. Professor Kodia will pray for the family, and I will come to pray for Johnny Masses. <laughs> Let's all stand and join the family in prayers. Our God and our Lord, we have heard you. And we are very grateful that you have also heard us. As we bid farewell to our Father, to a husband, to a brother, to many, a friend to all, to the servant of this nation who was in charge of our security in this country. You have heard our cries that may his good deeds not die, not fade away, but would be emulated by others as well as we commit the family before you, Lord. We want you to touch them, to surround them with the rings of fire that will protect them from anxiety, from evil thoughts, so that as they remember their loved ones, O oh Lord, it will not be in vain but will be a remembrance that we leave from their hearts to the rest of the nation who had also felt the good deeds that he had done to this country. You have heard their pains, but it's our prayer that you will replenish their pains with their joy as we shed tears of sorrow, grant us the favor of comfort. Even as we pray for our armed forces, because I know most of them are also touched by the loss, 
especially His Excellency the President, who has made it clear that he was the best he could find around. Father, you are the one who brings leaders at a time like this. Even in this exercise of duty, we pray that God you will touch the one that will bring our armed forces into unity and discipline for the good of our nation. As we pray for the family of the departed brother, we cannot forget about his father who could not be with him here to share this moment of grief. Father, extend your hands of mercy upon him. Even as he celebrates his 100 years in pain, touch him with love and sense of hope. As we commit each and every one of us here present into our enable care, touch us once more. Touch us once more, Lord, for in Jesus Christ we pray and believe. Amen. I just want to announce, particularly to the family, that the wish that General Gola had that we open and consecrate the church he helped build today, we have done it in the morning. The church is consecrated and uh, we have fulfilled his wish as he has asked us to do. Let us commit all our journeys in God's hands. We praise you, Lord, for this moment and this day. We have come from far and wide to join the family at this moment that we are giving the last respect to a departed brother, a father, a son, a husband, and a friend to all of us. Lord, give us journey masses on our back home and remain committed to unite the family and encourage them. God, go before us in all our endeavors. We commit the future of our nation in your hands. The Lord shall prosper as a people and be united as a people. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We give back to the MC to give us the last protocols. We may kindly take our seats. With your permission, Your Excellency, at this point, allow me to invite Major General Otieno, who will give us a very brief vote of thanks before I direct on the exit protocols, because from here we'll be heading to the gravesite. And as a request from the family, we have very, very limited space by the gravesite. So kindly, if you have not been briefed to proceed to the graveside, it is the desire of the family that we respect that and remain. I'm speaking as a wait for General, uh, Major General Otieno uh, to proceed so that we'll reduce on time. So if you're not briefed to come to the graveside, kindly we request that you follow the proceedings from the screens provided here. Welcome, sir, to give us the vote of thanks. Your Excellency, sir, on behalf of the organizing committees and myself, I would like to extend our sincere gratitude to all our distinguished guests, esteemed officials, and the community who have honored us with their presence at this service for our CDF, particularly Your Excellency, sir. I would like to start by expressing our deep appreciation to the church for their support, spiritual guidance, and blessings on this event. 
we are very thankful for the support you have given to the family, both here in CIA and Nairobi. Your presence here, sir, added a sense of reverence and grace to our gathering. A special thanks goes to the family of General Francis Omondi Ogola for the collaboration and support to the committees. Your support has ensured that the committees delivered on their mandate with your blessings and concurrence. We also extend our gratitude to the office of the president, the team at State House for their leadership and support in making this event a success. To the following, the Kenya Defense Forces, retired CDFs and retired generals and military officers, religious and county ad admin teams, the Kenya Shipyards Limited, service providers, both in Nairobi and Syria, the National Police Service, the Office of the Governor of Syria, the Office of the Area MP of Alego Usonga. We want to thank you very much for your unwavering support to the planning team and the family. Your collaboration and efforts have been instrumental in ensuring a peaceful and successful service. We also want to recognize the community and the local leaders for their openness and the partnership in ensuring we give our gallant son a befitting send-off. Your warmth and welcoming outlook made our visitors comfortable. And special thanks goes to Senator Barack Obama Primary School, where we are, and the secondary school for ably hosting us. In conclusion, sir, I would like to express my sincere gratitude once again to all of you who have uh, contributed to make this service a success. Your presence and support have made this event truly successful. I urge all to continue working and supporting the family. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. We've now come to the end of this farewell service. We'll now proceed to the graveside, and I'll just give a brief of the exit protocol. We'll start with the pallbearers coming in and wheeling out the late general, followed by the clergy, the family, His Excellency the President, the generals who are going to be part of what's happening by the graveside, and those who have been briefed to proceed, which includes immediate family. So kindly, just a reminder, we have very limited space, so let's honor that request. Again, the exit is the pallbearers as they wheel out the late general, will be followed by the clergy, the immediate family, His Excellency the President and the executive, followed by the generals. Thank you. Let's be upstanding, please.
Let us be all upstanding. We'll start with the national anthem before we wheel the late general out. So the national anthem. Casket, then followed by the immediate family, together with His Excellency the President, the First Lady, the Deputy President, the Prime Cabinet Secretary, the Speaker of the National Assembly, and all who had received a brief to proceed to the burial site for the final rites of the late General Francis Ogola. guided by my colleague, the body of the general exits, followed by the clergy, the family, and His Excellency, the President, and the other dignitaries. with the exit, allow me to announce that the visiting military generals are requested to go behind this podium. We have prepared lunch for you. The general from other foreign countries, the military generals, the CSS, prepared lunch for the following. The visiting generals from other foreign countries. We have prepared lunch for you just behind this podium. We've also prepared the same lunch for the CSS that may be remain behind, the PSS that may remain behind, the military generals that may remain behind, other dignitaries, including the MPs, we have prepared a lunch for you just behind this podium. Other senior government leaders, the RC, the CC, are invited. Any other dignitaries present, we 
welcome you for lunch just behind this tent as we allow the body of the late general to be taken home for the final laying of his body to rest. Thank you so much for being part of us. We continue being here. Our screens are on. We'll be able to follow up whatever is happening back there at home through our screens. However, those of us who will be here can still keep watching whatever is happening back at home. Naomba ya kwamba wale ambao tutabaki hapa screen zetu zitaendelea kutazama na ikiwa utakuwa hapa utaweza kufuatilia yale yanafanyika kule nyumbani wakati tunampumzisha generali wetu mamkuli aliyoandaliwa yameandaliwa kwa ajili ya viongozi wale ambao wamebaki hapa wakiwemo CSS, PSS, military generals, ndugu wa bunge, generals from other foreign countries, visiting military generals, service commanders from other services, the governor and also senior government leaders. Chick, chick, Regan, Regan, chick, 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 on. chick, one, two, one, two, one, two, go on, Regan, Regan. Defense Force uh, General Francis Ogola here in uh, Senator Obama, Kogelo Primary School. It is a service that has taken approximate since uh, the beginning about uh, uh, four hours from around 10 a.m. when it kick started, and right now, slightly past 2 p.m., around 2.20. 2 uh, it has run late by about 20 minutes, uh, one hour 20 minutes rather, because by this time it was expected that the body of the late chief of the defense force would have already been laid to rest at his home, which is six kilometers from here. But it is right now that the body is actually heading to his home where it will be laid to rest. We have our representation there that we will be giving us live pictures as is happening. Remember, as was communicated earlier, it's not, uh, it's not or cannot accommodate a lot of people. So very, very few people will be allowed in there, including the Commander-in-Chief, President William Ruto, and top government officials family members and top military officials and uh, in the next about one hour this should be done one hour to, uh, 30 minutes to one hour and uh, the commander in chief in chief rather will be leaving at his own pleasure but having heard the speeches that were made by the individuals who paid tributes to the late general logola you could pick from all the speeches this is indeed a hero who has rested. It is a funeral service that has been attended by thousands of residents of Siaya County and the entire Nyanza region. 
people filled this school to the brim and only here to you know, send off uh, the uh, military officer who, like we mentioned earlier, like his uh, history, uh, eulogy indicates, served the country for years, actually dedicated over 40 years of his life to serving the country. And uh, Roslino Bala has been with us uh, with every, uh, at every point in this particular service. And uh, this also with the teams that we've been having here, Zakius Mosame, who earlier on accompanied the convoy from Kisumu to here in Pasiaya County. And right now I bring Rosaline even as we wind up this and we'll be heading uh, to studio later on to hand over to Zainab Ismail even as she takes us through uh, that uh, ceremony at home. But Rosaline, it is almost all over right now. Uh, the celebration of the life of General Logola. Uh, some bits of, you know, uh, extremes coming out. You had... Uh, the opposition and, to be uh, precise, the senator for Siaya County, uh, Dr. Oburu, speaking about thorough investigations being done on this and uh, this saying that it is because this region has witnessed this before, has witnessed uh, mysterious deaths of uh, leaders of the state of Ogola, mentioning uh, Robert Ouko, Tom Boyer, you know, and many other leaders whom came from this particular region and he, in his own words is twice shy uh, but by the defense to me I think was also uh, exonerating uh, on, on about the claims that he was the bombers of Kenya on August 15th. What do you make out of the entire uh, speeches that we had and also how this particular final ceremony has been conducted? Uh, Ibrahim, uh, if you look at it, I think we have come towards to the tail end of, of uh, these celebrations. And just as we had indicated when we started that the family was more interested in not having uh, this uh, event turned into a political event. But there were political undertones. And you remember uh, when the exercise, the service started and when we reached the, the session for the government officials, you remember the leaders, and I think it started with the General Ogola's only son, uh, Joel, actually, pleading uh, with the leaders and Kenyans that let us exonerate his father. Uh, they, they think that uh, whatever happened, happened, and because his father was a man of faith, they believe everything uh, to God. Uh, everything does not happen. We should not be having uh, questions to, to put across. Uh, but remember when the leaders, the opposition leaders came, you've just talked about uh, CIA Senator Oburo Ginga, and also the, the area MP, uh, Lego Usonga MP, Sam Atandi, also touched on the issue. And also the CIA uh, governor, James Sorengo also alluded to it and they were saying that we should not read so much into it. It's There are no coincidences in accidents and whatever happens. And for, for the people of this region what they just uh, really want is closure. Just to be able to know what really happened. And the good thing, the louder the president and the KDF team is that they have already launched an investigation. But let it not just be an investigation that will gather dust, but come up with something that the region will actually be convinced that there was actually an investigation. And I think that has come out so clearly as uh, such as uh, the family was saying, we don't really want to go into this. But if you listened very well to, to CIA uh, Senator Oburo Ginga, he said this is not the first time. He was part and parcel of the Commission of Inquiry on the Uko death. And what came out was so sad that you wouldn't want the family to be convinced that they can actually lay things to lie down and not ask for answers. So where they sit, they don't say there was fault play or anything. But what they are saying, let Kenyans get to know what really happened with the crash so that it can actually uh, serve as an example that indeed if something happens, let's rule out any doubts that can be there. And I think the commander-in-chief actually affirmed that and he said under his administration, there will be no uh, political assassinations, there will be no uh, forced disappearance, people will not be killed. And I think 
that was quite something coming from the commander in chief coming to an area uh, of, of a leader that at some point they had a raft patch when it started when you were saying uh, he asked about his presence at, at bombers in uh, uh, during the just the announcement of the 2022 general elections and I think the CS for defense did justice to it when he came out and actually addressed that issue in a conclusion and he was talking about it and saying being that in the military in the dis uh, disciplined forces is about uh, obeying command. Uh, General Logola found himself there based on the communication that he was given. And he alluded to this and gave us a chronology of the SMSs and the communication that General Logola had with his superiors and even indicated that some were actually here to attend his funeral. So I think that has actually uh, wrapped up what uh, the issues that were there uh, surrounding this accident, the government talking about it, the opposition still insisting, and even NAC, uh, Kenya uh, party leader Martha Karua also talked about it and she said whatever happened just talks about the security of our forces. And she uh, enforced the issue of how secure should we have our commander-in-chief and also how secure should we have our CDF, who is a four-star general, just uh, uh, below the, the head of state. So I think if you if you go through what really happened and even the turnout, uh, leaders coming from all walks of life, uh, as, far, as far as this was a military event, but you see there was an infusion of the politics and also the military exercise. And, and I think and, and, uh, Chief mentioned uh, that the investigations into this particular air crash and, it, and their results will be laid bare because uh, you would remember launched by That by July of uh, last year, Parliament was petitioning the government to make public the uh, results of investigations into various accidents or air accidents. Remember, it goes way back to uh, 2003 during the Busia accident, air accident that killed uh, then Labour uh, Minister. Uh, and up to now, the reports have not been made public, but there was a very strong commitment by the head of state, who is the commander-in-chief, that it will be made bare. So uh, that is something that the country will certainly be uh, waiting to hear and see. All this, uh, all this, all this uh, mysteries, mysterious air crashes are uh, investigated. But all in all, it is the... ...though with very limited access to general is being laid to rest uh, they are, are very uh, there so the pictures there is that six kilometers from here is where the late general is being laid to rest that is general francis ogola at a function attended uh, by very very close family members uh, top government officials including the commander-in-chief president william ruto and top officers in the military like we indicated earlier the pole bearers were generals uh, yes and they are the ones who will uh, take him to his final uh, burial site. Perhaps closing words, even as we hand over to Zainab on the other end to perhaps break down on what she is able to follow from studio. Closing words on this particular uh, side. Um, I think, Ibrahim, this was a specular event, and I think that we have learned a lot, apart from actually learning the, the military traditions. Remember, this is the first general to actually have died in active duty in office. So I think it is something that even Kenyans and the world have been able to understand our traditions. And also being that this is the first time that it has actually been undertaken, uh, going by the KDF standing instructions that were actually formulated in 2020. This is the first time that they have done it for a general. Uh, the last time they did it for the former president, uh, Moi Kibaki. Uh, when the, 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 the president, uh, Daniel Arap Moi, passed on is when they were just formulating uh, the standing instructions. So I think that gave us an opening to understand the operations of KDF. Another thing that came out is that during the speeches, we were able to actually be taken through the journey of the late general in the eyes of his daughter, Lona. And she was able to talk about the circumstances 
sacrifices and the dedication of his father and how they were able to be inspired. And I think that was also carried away by the president when he was talking about people getting jobs based on merit and not their ethnicity or where they come from. A country that people feel that we are all equals. A country that promises the youth. And I, as we take it forward, I hope it will not just be a talk. It will not just be a talk shop that we had here, but we hope to see action that indeed the head of state and the leaders that accompany him are actually committed to what they have said. Yes, thank you. Sure. And uh, Rosalind Obala there. Rosalind Obala is a political editor, Nation Media Group. Uh, she has been uh, guiding us and helping us with this particular coverage. Thank you very much, Rosalind, for your unrivaled support and unrivaled uh, uh, knowledge of this particular uh, issue. And uh, the pictures on your screen are pictures from the burial site. Uh, we, as in the only way that NTV can, uh, we give you unrivaled coverage. We have drawn shots from that particular burial site there. And uh, just to ensure that you get an aerial view of what is happening. Yes, this trust to only get from the unrivaled NTV. The drone shots are right there of the burial site. This is where, for the, uh, the final journey, this is where uh, General uh, Francis Omondi Ogola will be. which in, in the, at that particular time when he mentioned that he must be buried within 72 hours upon his death mentioned that he needed to be buried actually uh, from that uh, tribute that was uh, paid by the sister alia we actually learned that he wanted to be buried 48 hours upon death uh, but then again uh, added them some hours and said okay now uh, you are allowed to do it 72 hours upon my death these are revelations rather that have been coming out from this particular uh, send off uh, journey of uh, the fourth chief of the defense force of the republic of kenya i say the fourth because he comes after uh, general julius karangi uh, general samson mwathefe uh, Ge uh, general uh, robert kibochi and now the late general uh, uh, <coughs> the late general francis omondi ogola excuse me and uh, even as we wind up here, my directors, uh, who I want to acknowledge for leading this particular uh, coverage, Mike, the director from here on the ground, assisted by Mabel, and, uh, and an excellent team here in, at the ground and in Nairobi from the Nation Center. We have uh, Jackie Alossi, the director who has been coordinating this particular coverage from that other end. We have a host of journalists from the Nation Media Group who have been covering this. Uh, a special mention to Zakius Mwasame, who uh, ha was with this particular convoy from Kisumu and has been with us here uh, even as we uh, wind up here. Uh, there is also the crew, the different crew, Doreen Magak, uh, the team that came from the Kakamega Bureau, the entire team at the Nation Media Group that has made this a success. Uh, right now, we uh, leave you with the pictures at the burial uh, site where the late General Francis Omondi Ogola is being laid to rest, a spot where he uh, picked by himself, even as on the other end, my colleague Zena it's a way to just close up this and from the nation center it has been an honor to host you and uh, take you through this very fast uh, burial of a serving chief of the defense force a very sad moment for the country but also a fast that the country uh, is experiencing and paying its last respect my name is ibrahim karanja we leave you with the uh, live pictures from the burial site and like i mentioned on the other end our colleague zaina bismail will be taking over to just wind up and draw the curtains uh, to the this particular coverage. Good afternoon and thank you very much for making NTV your choice in this particular coverage. All right, Ibrahim Karanja there. Thank you so much, Ibrahim Karanja, for holding forth 
in Ngea Siaya County together with the rest of the crew. And of course, the pictures now running on your screen is the burial site of the late General Ogola. And of course, the military burial rites are expected to be held there in this private ceremony in General Ogola's home. And only designated mourners, like we've been told, will be allowed in the home where the general will receive a 19 gun salute before his body is finally laid to rest and of course this is the rolling coverage of this burial service and interment of the late general francis omondi ogola and uh, what we saw earlier on was happening at the Bama Kogelo Primary School that was in Gia Village uh, in Siaya County. After the, uh, uh, the ceremony, of course, we saw the casket bearing the body of the late CDF General Ogola being wheeled to the graveside where only about 50 people, including immediate family members, are expected. And uh, there you have it, the generals, other servicemen just ready, awaiting the body of the late general so that they can be able to give him his final send-off. And what we know from uh, the, the funeral is that uh, there will be a signal sounded that uh, will be using either a trumpet or a drum to alert the military for assembly, which is usually sounded in a morning to awaken military personnel and then followed by a one minute silence, which will then, uh, we're going to be getting the last post will be played. This is a tune played on a bugle at the military funerals, uh, which also signals a time for the military to retire for the day. And then a 19 gun salute in honor of the late general. And then the laying of the wreath ceremony and after that, the national anthem will once again be played to signal the end of the burial ceremony, which is happening at uh, the burial site, the graveside. And of course, this is at uh, the home of the late general. Only very few people uh, will be attending that, which will also include uh, the family members of the late uh, general we also have the clergymen we saw uh, we have the president we have the deputy president speaker of the national assembly together with other dignitaries who have been invited to the graveside you can see uh, the clergymen already making their way into that graveside including the ack archbishop uh, jackson Ole sapit leading other clergymen uh, there and of course uh, we'll also be seeing president william ruto together with his deputy the speaker and other dignitaries as well making their way there remember we saw an outpouring of tributes uh, to the late general uh, in uh, the speeches that we saw from many of the people who were able to speak including the family members uh, we also had from the leaders there. But most importantly, of course, was just looking at some of the things that have been said of the late general, uh, an exemplary more man he was, his character and his pursuit of excellence coming to the fore of uh, some of the key speeches there. President William Ruto speaking of a consummate military officer, a passionate commander, he said, and a patriotic citizen of Kenya, which uh, he said was a man who exemplified great humility and intelligence integrity as well. We also saw a speech by his daughter Lona Ogola who spoke of the kind of apparent General Ogola really was, he, how his ambition and humility exemplified his life, his love for his family, but also most importantly was his love for country as a military serviceman. Of course his family is speaking also of his devotion to to God and you know him being a very committed Christian and of course uh, what that really meant for him his son Joel giving a glimpse of the work his father had initiated in his community in Siaya County including uh, uh, building of schools and including that church that was consecrated today he was going to be part of the opening, the consecration of the church today. And of course, that did not happen because of that untimely uh, accident uh, that now led to his demise together with other nine military members. And of course, now what we also had from the speeches was the calls for a thorough probe into that accident. This, uh, uh, of course, uh, has been reiterated by leaders, especially from the opposition coalition, calling for a thorough investigation and probe into that accident. Uh, we had from the Waipa Party leader, Kalonzo Musyoka, also uh, 
uh, echoed by the NAC party leader, Martha Karua, who are both co-principals uh, of the Azimio coalition. And of course, uh, the CIA senator as well, coming up strongly to speak on, on that matter. And uh, the president has indeed uh, also said that uh, a thorough investigation will be done and everything will be laid, uh, laid in public uh, for that uh, to be to be you know uh, to be seen and of course also away from that is also the cabinet secretary for defense aid and duale who we saw speaking on the issue of the 2022 presidential election which also arose yesterday and of course uh, duale revealing that when uh, the bombers issue came out uh, it really disturbed the late general a lot and how his name was dragged into that matter uh, duale noting that general ogola was following a directive uh, to appear at the bombers of Kenya and had no hand whatsoever in what transpired there. And uh, that, of course, came out from allegations uh, that there were those who tried to overturn the 2022 election results. And, of course, that's uh, something that uh, has uh, continued to feature in uh, uh, the things that we've had and even on social media. And, of course, that's uh, exactly what are some of the things that have been said by those people who had the opportunity to make the speech and of course, honor and celebrate the life of the late general as we await to just get more pictures from the graveside, if we can be able to see what exactly is happening there. And of course, uh, we saw that uh, his body was being wheeled to that graveside for the, his final resting uh, place. This is what he wished. And of course, uh, like we've had several times, is that his wishes entailed him being uh, laid to rest 72 hours upon his demise and that is exactly what has happened and uh, that is uh, the honor that he has been given according to the military as well as uh, the honor that was also bestowed upon him uh, by the family and uh, that's what we have seen so far well we also remember just earlier on saying that we saw the consecration uh, service at the SEK church that the fallen general had indeed significantly participated in its uh, construction. He was expected to appear today for that consecration. Unfortunately, that did not happen. And of course, what we also know is that the country will also be holding a memorial service in honor of the late general that will be happening on Friday. That's the 26th of April at the Olinzi Sports Complex in Langa Langata. And this is also in line with the family's wishes as well. And uh, there you have it, uh, just uh, if you can also still be able to get those final pictures to give you a final glimpse of exactly what happened or what is happening right now, the final activity, laying the general uh, to his final resting place in that private aff affair as per the wishes of the family and his will as well. And uh, only those who will be briefed are expected to be there, the clergymen. Uh, we also know that the family will be there, uh, the President William Ruto, together with his deputy, as well as other dignitaries who've only been invited. About 50 people are expected to be there. And uh, that's just a recap of exactly what transpired today in the burial service of the late general. And of course, with honor, we offer that final salute to his honorable soul to lay at rest and we say farewell general farewell well this was the rolling coverage of the burial final burial service of the late general francis omondi ogola from the entire team from those who in ci who made this possible our director and of course all the crew members this was your live coverage of that event my name is zainabi smile well Continue staying with us, and we now take you back to our normal coverage.
All right, that is the rolling coverage of the burial service and interment for the late General Francis Omondi Ogola. And of course, that is happening in Ngea in Siaya County. You can see the hearse has already arrived at the late General Omondi Ogola's home. And of course, uh, this is going to be a private ceremony. The military burial rites expected now to be held here in this ceremony. And of course, only designated mourners have been allowed in the home where the general will receive a 19-gun salute before his body is finally laid to rest. And of course, there you have the body that has been now wheeled in and shall be removed from the house when that uh, final military rite so is expected to happen there in his home. And of course, uh, what we know is that uh, uh, there will be a signal sounded using a trumpet and this is going to be an alert to the military for assembly. This is usually sounded in the morning to awaken military personnel and then followed by a one minute silence, which then the last post will be played. This is a tune played on a bugle at military funerals, which also signals a time for the military to retire for the day. And uh, with that, a 19 gun salute in honor of the late general and then the laying of the wreath ceremony. And of course, after that will be the national anthem that will be played to signal the end of the burial ceremony. Those are live pictures coming to you from the grave side. We can see the military servicemen just waiting to begin that final rites. And of course, uh, we'll be bringing you live pictures of exactly what is happening uh, there. And uh, you can see according to the drone shots that we have, all the military servicemen now being assembled there. And of course, what we are now waiting to hear is uh, the sound of the trumpet where uh, they're going to now have the body soon being laid to its final resting place. And of course, what we know from what happened earlier on in terms of the speeches was that President William Ruto has suddenly assured that findings of the probe into the helicopter crash that killed the chief of the defense forces, the General Francis Ogola, will certainly be laid bare. We can see family members there, the son and the daughter, together the son and the mother uh, walking together, the wife of the late general, and of course the son, Joel. And now the clergymen assembling as uh, they await for the next steps which will be held in honor of the late general. Those are according to the protocols of the military. And of course, this had to be followed a balance in terms of the wishes of the late general, the wishes of the family, as well as the protocols that are laid bare uh, by the military as well. Family members who are making their way to the graveside first and then they will be followed according to what we're seeing uh, the live pictures there followed by the clergymen and uh, i believe some of the other dignitaries who have been invited into that final rites ceremony and that is exactly what is happening so far there and this is happening in Alego Songa sub county, that is in Siaya County, specifically in Gia Village. And uh, we did see an outpouring of tributes there just a little bit earlier on from those who managed to speak. And of course, the head of state, that is President William Ruto, says that uh, the Kenya Defense Forces has demonstrated their integrity and professionalism in everything that they have done and of course he said that uh, he regretted that many kenyans have fallen victim to extrajudicial killings and political assassinations in the past saying that uh, he makes a commitment that there will never be again extrajudicial killings or political assassinations and that there shall never have uh, we shall never have to see bodies of kenyans in rivayala under his watch now ogola was among the 10 officers who was killed in a helicopter crash on Thursday on the border between El Gil Marquette and Wasingishu counties. And uh, they were on a peace mission in the troubled Rift Valley region where certainly there has been a lot of issues of cattle rustling and banditry. What we saw 
is uh, a lot of uh, tributes there to the late general, of course. Uh, even on Saturday, we saw opposition leader Raila Odinga calling for those thorough investigations into that crash, and that is what led to the president saying that there will certainly be uh, a probe done and uh, that everything will be laid bare for everyone uh, to see. Just also looking back at some of those tributes, Lorna Ching, the surviving daughter of the late uh, CDF General Francis Ogola, eloquently expressed how uh, her father inspired her to excel in her career. And of course, uh, speaking about what her father did and uh, giving 100% in everything that he did, not only for his family, but also for country as well. And then his love for his family. Uh, also talking about uh, uh, instances that uh, her father her father really came out quite strongly in terms of perseverance, narrating how he would commute between the Laikipi Air Base in Nairobi just to attend classes at the University of Nairobi, which he excelled with first class honors. That is something that she highlighted. And of course, also revealing that uh, during this particular period, there was that Operation Linda Inchi that was also ongoing. And uh, she would uh, constantly ask herself, how can she not achieve, if, achieve, you know, and excel if her father managed to excel quite remarkably? Well, uh, she also recalled a moment back in 2005 when the father was to travel to France for further studies and had only six months to learn French. And of course, uh, this was something that uh, uh, she highlighted in her speech. And uh, with a health complication, after swallowing a fishbone, he was also hospitalized for two months and still managed to pass that particular test and uh, said that uh, nothing would be able to dampen the spirit uh, of his goal and that he was quite strong in terms of the things uh, you know he set out to do. Let's just quickly get a view, let's just get quickly the sounds of exactly what is happening there at the graveside. We can see the military men who are quite ready uh, to just uh, take us through that final uh, process. Let's l have a listen. <laughs>
All right, there you have it. Uh, we can see that uh, some of the dignitaries have arrived. The cabinet secretary for defense, Aidan Dwale, there making his way according to the latest pictures that we've seen. And of course, now the military men ready uh, to now make uh, their last uh, salute to the late General Francis Ogola. And of course, these are the final rites of uh, this burial of uh, the Kenya's Chief of Defense, France, uh, General Francis Omondi Ogola. And of course, he's being laid at his home in Moor Village. This is in Siaya County. What we know is that the entourage has already arrived at General Ogola's home here in Moor Village. And of course, uh, he will be laid in this private ceremony with about 50 attendants. Other mourners are expected to witness the burial on their screens that are mounted at the Obama Kogelo Primary School in Ngia, that is in uh, Siaya County. And of course, this is in Moor Village. You can see President William Ruto there and uh, the Cabinet Secretary for Defense, Aidan Duale, ready to receive uh, the body of the late General Francis Omondi Ogola. I beg your pardon, there you have it, the President William Ruto. You can see the first lady there. We also see the deputy president together with uh, the defense cabinet secretary. And on the side, we also see the family members of the late general. That's his wife and together with his two children, Lorna and Joel. And of course, this is now the final rite as uh, expected, uh, the military taking over. And you can see the clergymen right behind uh, the military men who are at the very front. Uh, this is according to the protocols of uh, uh, the laying to rest of a general. Of course, this being the first general who has died while serving, that is active in duty. And of course, the heart there, the, cas the casket uh, being wheeled right behind uh, the clergymen together with the pallbearers who are the generals side by side as they take him to his final resting place. And of course, that is exactly now what we expect to see. And uh, with that, we know that there are a number of things that uh, will be happening, uh, a, a signal that will be sounded. And uh, this is to alert the military for assembly. There you have it. I believe that has already happened. There's going to be a one minute of silence and then the last post will be played. That's a tune that is going to be played. And this is usually happens at military funerals. It also signals a time for the military to retire for the day. Suddenly a symbolic gesture there. And then a 19 gun salute in honor of the late general. And that is uh, according to the honor that he is going to be bestowed upon. And then finally, uh, the wreath which was going to be laid upon his grave and then the national anthem which will be played again a symbolic thing to signal the end of that burial ceremony that is exactly what is happening right now live pictures coming from the late general's home in Moore in Sierra County let's just listen to some of the natural sounds there to get a feel of what is happening exactly
Lord Jesus Christ, through your own time in the grave, you made the graves of all believers sacred. May the body of our beloved brother, General Francis Omonio Gola, lie peacefully in the earth. And may he participate in your resurrection through the power of the Holy Spirit.
you would understand why um, the cameras had to face down. It is because the general it was not to be buried in a coffin.
basi mheshimiwa rais tutaweza kuwa na kipindi cha kutulia kwa dakika moja kwa ajili ya maisha ya jenerali tunayemzika siku ya leo dakika moja hiyo inaanza hivi sasa Asante sana mheshimiwa rais kwa kuweza kutulia kwa dakika moja tuweze kuvalia kofia zetu kwa ajili ya last post ama kupenda buruji ya pili samahani tutaweza kupata kipindi kifupi cha maombi basi tuombe pamoja tuje mbele yako baba rehema kwa nafasi hii ambao umetupa tujumuike hapa tuweze kulalisha mwili wa ndugu yetu Martin Mungu tuweka roho yake mkononi mwako pamoja na familia na kila mmoja wetu kwa Yesu Kristo bwana basi hivi sasa tutabaki tukiwa tumetulia
basi kwa heshima naomba sote tutulie kwa mizinga 19 tukiletewa na jeshi letu la wanamaji na sote tutaweza kupiga saluti wakati huu basi tupate wimbo wa taifa basi mheshimiwa rais nitaweza kupisha nafasi hii viongozi wetu wa kidini waweze kuendelea na maombi hivi sasa we will continue now with the committal prayers lord have mercy upon us rise have mercy then i heard a voice from heaven say right Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rise from their labor, for their deeds will follow them. 
therefore trusting in God's abundance, provision of grace and in his gift of righteousness through the open, through the one person, Jesus Christ, we give the spirit of our brother, General Francis Omonio Gola. He had departed into the everlasting arms of God to take him to himself when we commit his body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, <coughs> dust to dust. For all the redeemed of the Lord, our sure hope is in the resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who shall change our perishable body so that it may be raised like his glorious body according to the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Jesus Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand above all rule and authority, power and dominion forever and ever. They are before the throne of God and serve him day by day, night by night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat, for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God's, God's will wipe away every tear, such as the one the family and all mourners are crying now, it will be no more. Let us all join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We now request all who will be able to throw their soil to come forward. Basi tuweze kwanza na mwishme rice, aweze pamoja na familia. Familia, aweze Thank you. 
mheshimiwa rais niweze kumpisha mwezangu aweze kuletea itifaki ya kuweza kuweka shala la maua katika kambi Thank you. We will start with the laying of the wreath, starting with the church, so if we can kindly have the wreath that is going to be laid by the church. The next wreath, if we can have it prepared kindly, we'll have for Madam Eileen. is for the children. They will lay one together. We we'll have one for the children. Followed by His Excellency the President together with Her Excellency the First Lady. Next we'll have is for His Excellency, the Deputy President. Followed by that of the Speaker of the National Assembly. Then we'll have the Cabinet Secretary for Defense. Followed by the Vice Chief of Defense Forces. We'll then have the Service Commander starting with the Commander Kenya Army. Followed by the Commander Kenya Air Force. Followed by Commander Kenya Navy. Let's also have a representative of the larger family. larger family, the representative of the larger family. Then the Defense Forces Sergeant Major. Defense Forces Sergeant Major together with Kenya Air Force Sergeant Major. Defense Forces Sergeant Major together with Kenya Air Force Sergeant Major. That represents all the soldiers of the Kenya Defense Forces. With that, we've come to the end of the laying of wreaths. We'll now hand it over to the church to lead us in the benediction. Precious Lord, we have seen your glory, and we thank you for the innocent souls that have gathered here to bid farewell to our brother. We thank you for the good work that has happened 
which is a manifestation of our love for him and for the family and for the Kenya nation as a whole. Now, good Lord, may the Son, Christ the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. So we commit you to the Lord as you will be filling the house. Thank you. Just before that, one final thing is the handing over of the flags to Madam Eileen before we then proceed to fill the room. The handing over of the flags. See <laughs>
right and there you have it a somber mood at uh, the home of the late chief of defense forces general francis ogola there buried at his home in gear a lego sengo constituency that is in siaya county what we witnessed is full honors that have been accorded to the late general including a 19 gun salute and of course this is uh, what we've witnessed including the handing over of uh, certain things which include a flag a kenyan flag and his boots to his wife Aileen and this is uh, just basically to indicate that the late general served in the Kenyan military and of course he has now finally been laid to his final resting place taking a bow taking his final salute and of course buried according to his will and wishes which included not and without a coffin he was wrapped in sheets and laid to his final resting place and of course from the entire nation media group we continue to condole and say pole to the family and the entire country at large and once again we say farewell general fare thee well this is the end of our rolling coverage of this burial service my name is Enabi Smile do enjoy the rest of your view TV. People come to me and they say they get discomfort when they have ice cream. Can you imagine that? Avoiding having cold ice cream. Sensodyne gives you long-lasting protections against sensitivity. And people come in and they're like, oh, it works. I can have ice cream and I'm not in any discomfort. I recommend Sensodyne because it works. It's brilliant. I'm sure you're wondering why you're saying. The reason why you're coming here is not because you're just getting a degree. You're getting to experience your sayo. Kaka brother. Yes, sir. Majina nani? Solomon Nyango. Nimekuja leo na Lotto Moto. Madam, majina nani? Nelia Ombuna. Ni nini unataka itoke hapa ndani? Pesa. Pesa. Niko hapa. Mungu anisaidie nipate pesa, niende niweke hiyo biashara na watoto waende shule. Eh hey, bwana. Umsaidia. Amen. Ibra. Yeah. Wewe si wa mbali sana. Umekujia nini? Nakujia do. Uko sure unataka pesa? You have a chance ya kujishikia nusu milioni. Simama ni wako. Mm. Nalukia nini? Maisha mzuri kabisa. Amen. In the name and amen. Toka hapo. Wacha kizungu. Mimi mwenyewe najaribu kukusaidia. <laughs> Sasa hii imetosha. I want you to give me your answer ukiwa sure. Mara ya mwisho nauliza. Cheza Loto Moto. Shinda pesa moto moto. Mimi ndachunga mawa yetu vizuri sana. Hatiwe na ruti. Family business is everything. The Beauty and the Beats. Shanga. Starting 25 April at 8pm on Maisha Magic Plus.